The following is a special presentation of iRacing on LSR TV, your home for sim racing. Tonight from the Lanier Raceplex, LSR TV with you to say good evening, Sim Racing fans, and welcome to the 2018 Championship Esports Association Cars Esport Tour on your home for Sim Racing and iRacing Live. Where tonight from Brazelton, Georgia, we drop the green flag once again on this 2018 campaign. And as always, we're happy that you're spending a Wednesday evening with us here on LSR TV and our racing live late model stock super late models all up for grabs as we welcome you into the LSR TV booth myself Evan Pasoko Austin Coop Gary Weaver upstairs with you on the call downstairs twisted and tweaking the dials the lovely and talented Cisco Scarabus are bringing us to you this evening and Coop as always we're going to get a good look at both of our major divisions here tonight and we'll get it all started off with the super late models and we'll really just focus on them for the moment late model stock feature going to be coming up immediately following of course this SLA main event but on tap first 150 laps in the super late models from Lanier should be a good race very fun sporty racetrack yeah this is a racetrack and in particular is uh, had a lot of character you can find it to be, to be similar to uh, to South Boston Sobo uh, in a way but it has a little bit more banking and it's a little bit uh, a little bit larger these are less than half a mile this is a less than half mile track and they're gonna be going around this track so quick um, you know, with 150 laps, it sounds daunting, but these laps are going to click by really quick, and um, there will be, it's, I mean, this is going to be really close racing, as we always see at these short, at these short tracks, but uh, something that's really unique about this is you can almost go all the way down to that yellow wall on the inside uh, of turn one, two, and, and of course, in three and four. Uh, but we'll probably see these guys go a little bit higher in the track as the runs go on, just because that's going to be the nature of how the... Uh, how the track will start to, to raise in temperature and, and track wear as the uh, as night rolls on. And this super late model division has been fun to watch all season long, Gary. We've seen three points races out of them and three different race winners. Matt Cucker, Justin Trombley, and then most recently, Jake Watson getting the win from the Martinsville Speedway. So as we look at your super late model standings coming into tonight, Christian Peterson at the top of it all. Not a driver who I listed with a win yet. He's the highest driver of the points with a win leading the points, actually. Just by one point over Jake Watson, two points over Justin Trombley, and then 11 points back back as Matt and Cucker. Those are your three race winners. So Peterson's been doing everything he needs to do. Mr. Consistent, he's tied for the series best with two top fives and three top tens. Peterson, like you mentioned, very consistent. He's done an amazing job this season so far. Of course, uh, listed with, again, those two bonus points are helping him out right now, giving him that one point buffer as well. So without that one bonus point that he had, he would either be tied or at least in second place just behind Jake Watson in points, but that would be if he hasn't had those two bonus points. So we're going to see if Christian Pearson can keep up that consistency and if he can actually get a win here tonight. Going to be the ultimate objective. Nothing strange to keep note of tonight. No segments or anything like that. It is 150 laps start to finish, of course, as always in all of these Cars Esport Tour events. The 40 lap rule in effect, there are 40 laps of uncontested green flag action would trigger a competition caution, not counting the final 25 laps of the race. That being said, though, cars are down tracks. All right, let's get a Wednesday night, a short track race and kicked off and go down and take a look at tonight's LSR TV starting grid from Lanier, Jake Watson looking for two in a row. He'll start tonight from pole position as he eyes the championship lead. He'll bring us to the green flying tonight alongside the 62 of William Hale, who starts in second. And back in row number two, Ryan Doucette will start tonight in third spot. Gabe Wood will roll off from fourth, just behind them. Andrew Wooten is on the inside of row three in P5. Starting in tonight's sixth place position will be Matt Cucker, Corey Hine. We'll start in the seventh position with Jeremy Adams starting eighth. Ninth goes to Justin Tromley in tenth. And you're starting out your top ten will be Jeff Ward. 
Starting in the 11th is going to be Devin Morgan. Dawson Fletcher starts beside him on the outside in 12th. 13th is going to be Joe Burchett. Burchett. 14th, Brendan Wilkinson. And running up the top 15 is Rafe Slade. Continuing through 16th is A.J. Rogers. Tommy Ryan, 17th. Brad Carpenter will roll off at 18th spot. Back on row 10, 19th is Scott Austin. And 20th is Chip Digger. Bringing the 21st position will be Randy Yoakum with game A 410, starting 22nd, 23rd, Wally Wilson, 24th, Christian Peterson, and then John Lighty and Charlie Melvin will round up 13, row field. Look down at the bottom at your LSR TV starting grid. As we said, happy that you're joining us on a Wednesday evening on LSR TV and our racing live. Pace car down at infield in the hands of pole sitter Jake Watson. We are Cars Esport Tour racing from Lanier. Fourth points race of 2018. And Watson from the pole will lead first lap through three and four. Very quick lap times around this racetrack. That's why we got 150 of them total distance. But it'll be Watson, Hale, Deuce. Set, no changes. One, two, and three. Gabe Wood will make a change for fourth, and a caution flag now going to come out on lap two. And there are a lot of cars up against the fence in turn two. It looks like Randy Yoakum's a little bit involved with that, but yeah, it looks like Christian Peterson starting in the back, and he got tagged by the 36, but he also had the nine to his outside, and a lot of these guys were hard charging as he had already come out of a three wide situation. So I think the 36 uh, just kind of threw the threw the car in and. Uh, we'll see if that's his, if that's going to be put on him. I think that might be. So that's going to send those drivers with some damage. But overall, not too bad for some of these drivers. Just a spin and a half for some of these guys, and uh, they'll keep rolling on. Yeah, Peterson was kind of in the middle of being clear and not being clear, and that 36 of Wally Wilson wanted to stay down on the inside of the racetrack there, and uh, Peterson tried to slide across the nose. Wilson drove in hard, tried to protect that position, and it uh, sent both the 23 and the 9 up the hill. Uh, very minor contact uh, for the likes of the 54 and the 71. He just got a little damage trying to get on the brakes, but uh, Wilson, who had originally drove through that without issue, he'll be given the EOL penalty for the cause of the caution so that is going to drop him way down the line he was already back in 23rd so he's can't he can't fall that much further down i guess per se he'll get kicked back to 25th position um so it is going to cost him a little bit should also note that guillaume fortin who was supposed to start in 22nd position is already down a couple of laps i don't think he made the grid when we were taking a look top to bottom so he's at four lap disadvantage just now i think trying to get back on track so 25 25 cars took the green flag uh 20 six of them are active on the racetrack at the moment. Jake Watson still leading. It's very unfortunate for this first accident as well. And of course, commentators curse. Uh, so that's really unfortunate for Christian Pearson. It's just one of those moments where you're going a bit too hard too early on. And again, 150 laps, like you mentioned, Devin. And right now we're going to be on lap seven. As the lights go out on the pace car, hanging back double file. So these guys have enough to relax just a little bit but then they'd have to quickly get going after they get into their rhythm and that's a big key thing as well is just getting some laps in under your belt and kind of getting into that rhythm again the laps go by quickly here everything is very fast paced you're going to be up on the wheel for the get go green flag flies not a big window for Watson to restart this race he does go and we're underway but William Hale right there top side doing his best to challenge let's look back in line single file at the front oh Gabe Woods around here in the frack straightaway it looks like a little bit of contact happened and domino effect him into the inside he didn't hit anything but he did get tagged and it looks like that started with the two. He had a bad restart, too, and I think that kind of started on the 45. Hit the two, didn't get off of him uh, enough, and that got Gabe Wood involved. Gabe Wood was on the inside of the contact. As you get a second look at the replay here, the uh, initial contact actually comes between the 45 of Trombley and the two of Wooten. Wooten's the one who gets tagged, and then Gabe Wood does his best to check up. That memo, that memo really didn't uh, get past all the way down to Matt Cunker, who tags the double O of Gabe Wood and sent around. Good news is Wood did it back it into the inside while Gary just went for a spin. Bad news, obviously, he was at a top 10 running position, sixth at the time of contact. He's going to go. Uh, down that running order a good little bit here uh, for being the cause of that caution scored right now 24th out of 24 cars on the lead lap but uh, he's still got a race car and a long way to go so I guess it could be worse but uh, Gabe Wood had uh, gone from being in a very good position now to being way on the outside looking in yeah he was doing such a great job staying up there but it's again just one of those unfortunate moments like you mentioned he did an amazing job keeping it off that inside wall they're locking it down so 
as far as I know, the only thing that I saw from that contact is that he has a little bit of left rear, uh, left rear quarter panel damage. Not too major to really affect his uh, car or arrow or momentum in any way, it seems, as of right now. So hopefully Gabriel Wood can quickly recover from this once we go back green. It'd be uh, a, a long road to hope for sure from Wade there in the back. I think the key is obviously staying disciplined and not trying to get, you know, all 20 some out of those positions right at once. Uh, this race still has a long way to go. And if you do break into a green flag run, like I said, those lap times are going to evaporate pretty quickly. Green flag conditions, you're talking about drivers that are running lap times uh, right in the range of about 13 seconds or so. Uh, best lap time we've seen so far tonight. Jake Watson, a race leader with a third. 13.559. So you get four laps done every single minute. 150 laps isn't that long when you break it down like that. But the restarts are going to be a critical thing because inside and out, both seem to be formidable options. When the pace car heads down and you put the right foot down, green flying in the air. We'll try it again. Watson again. Small advantage to one. Look for Hale to tuck in line. He'll do so. Top two single file. It looks like just about everybody is uh, is pretty spread out this time around. I think everyone realized that they need to kind of you know keep it clear so that way they can get some green flag racing in there and see where they're at. Because if we keep having any of the issues, which we do have one with the number, it uh, looks like the 89. That's going to be Jeremy Adams. Look like he got slightly tagged. Uh, so maybe they're not going as easy as I thought. But these guys got to get a good run in here. But there's a lot of drivers really out of shape right now, seeing a big bunch up behind Jeff Ford and turn number two on the back straight away. That's what you got to be careful with in race control. Reminded the drivers over the radio to take it easy. Anytime you're side by side anywhere on this racetrack, things are obviously in a hold your breath moment. Top 10 actually single file all the way back to the fight between Jerry Adams and the 89 and the 6 of Tommy Ryan. That one for 12th and 13th position. And Adams very much on the defensive as Ryan wants to continue up through the field. Looking like the inside still the better place to be, but it's not a big advantage. And the 89 of Adams smacked the wall that time to two big hit and he almost came down and took out Tommy Ryan it'll be enough for the six to complete the pass but the 89 machines looked better yeah that ain't uh, Jeremy Adams was doing so well hanging up on the upside and unfortunately the outside wall of turn two reminded them hey I'm right here so right now just behind them is Brad Carpenter the number three right beside the number 78 of well now right beside 23 of Pearson I think something happened to Carpenter he had to check up a lot He's probably heading for that outside wall, so he had to check up, and right now it's going to send him down the order just a little bit. Now to his inside is going to be that 08 of Rafe Slate. The Slate's looking to obviously take advantage of a, maybe a flustered number three, a Carpenter up top. He drove really aggressively that time by, got the pass, and looks like the 71 to Bishita Dawson. Fletcher wants to do the same, so everybody teaming up on Brad Carpenter. When one car gets by, they're all going to get by. Fletcher's through and the double of a game. Whoa, look at the three come back, though. What a crossover. Almost, you know, dive bombed that left or quarter panel of Gabe Woods entry. Somehow they didn't get into each other. It's aggressive as the Move, you'll see by the three and Gabe Wood slides down on him wants none of that yeah and you'll see that especially with uh, with Gabe Wood starting at the front knowing he had a really fast car he's not going to he's not going to really have any of that right now and not a lot of these drivers are going to because they want to try and get back up there if they were spun out like Christian Peterson Peterson's are already back up almost in the top 10 Gabe Wood he's getting back up there already he got himself a really fast car tonight uh, just right now, obviously not able to show for it. But a lot of these guys are getting below that yellow line that we see the yellow, yellow dotted line. There goes the three. He's going to take out the 71 on the front straightaway. Fletcher's around. Caution flag is out. And that three machine on the inside of the racetrack was trying to get a couple of those spots back. Very aggressive in the battle with Gabe Wood. And he got into the 71 machine. And he did try to get off of him. I know that you, you're going to watch the replay. He's just driving through that left or quarter panel. Gary really was trying to stay off of him, but once he got him once, it just sent like that 71 kept getting on the nose, and there was really nowhere to get him away until he went all the way around. And uh, what started as a little bit of over-aggressive driving as he'll be hit with that end of the longest line penalty, and Carpenter's going to go all the way to the back. Snowballs into one car around at lap 26. Yeah, I'm looking at the replay as well right now, and I can see that the number three of Carpenter is trying to stay off the back bumper he had it and then it looks like he tries to move it just lower to get out of the way but that 71 was trying to save it so much but he was still sideways to the point of where it would still unfortunately send him around luckily he didn't really get into anything but 
uh, as of right now, that 71 is back all the way in 24th. At the time, he was at position 19 or so. So not really all that many positions lost, but one position can mean so much for you. It's been a couple of drivers now that have gotten the one-way ticket to the back of the pack, working again 30 yellow with the night inside of the opening 30 laps of this race. Again, at 150 on tap in the super late models, late model stock, same song and dance, 150 laps as well. Here from the Lanier Raceplex, that one coming up immediately following as we toss out the checkered flag in this race. Coop, though, with this many cars on what is, you know, objectively a small track, this Lanier Raceplex, 0.37 miles in length. Uh, you know, you're talking about a racetrack, obviously, four turns on the oval uh, with uh, just eight degrees of banking in the quarters. It's a wide track in the aspect that if you parked cars side by side, you could fit six, seven of them in the corner, I'm sure. But at race speed, everybody wants to be as low as you can. That's where you're already seeing that line get rubbered in. Yeah, exactly. And uh, what will happen here then this restart is we're going to... We're going to see that those drivers on this restart will have a little bit more options on the top side, just like we will just throughout the night with this uh, with this setting as these guys are already in turns three and four. The rest of the field trying to catch up to go green. Being flagged back in the air, Hale's put up a couple of fights, but has been unable to challenge Jake Watson for the race lead any further than the exit at turn two. And the same will be true here once again. Watson clear, Hale tucks down in line, so top two single file it out, but a battle for second right now with the 45 of Trombley up top, trying to get around Ryan Doucette. 77 should have the better positioning, but right now they're nose to nose for third, and also nose to nose for fifth and sixth behind them with the two car of Wooten and the 69 of Cucker. Two by two, they go into the corner and still staying side by side. That both that 45 and the 69 trying to hold up, and Trombley actually got into the advantage of turn number two there, and trying to get by and a little bit loose out of the corner as Ryan Doucette. Say the car wiggled just the slightest bit. Looks like that's going to send them back just a little bit. Trombley still trying to get around a little bit more of an advantage this time around. And so it looks like the number 12 of Devin Morgan is going to join in on this battle. And Evan Morgan wants to join the fun in the 12 car. He wants a third set of 2x2 two two to get going. Maybe he can pick up uh, Cucker's dancing partner in the 2 there at Wooten because the 60 Donna machine is trying to get going up top. Again, the 45 still unable to completely clear two sets, so we're still side by side for third. But Cucker's definitely providing some incentive. And there you go, the 45 of Trombley through to P3. Cucker's going to fill that spot immediately. He should be able to get fourth here. Now, lost a little bit of speed that time, but a four. He had a really big run but into three and four on the 77. Now back down the back straightaway and off to turn three again. Cucker pulling about a half a car length, looking to drop the 77 to a race low P5. He had the advantage at the line, should clear him this time by. Yeah, this is what I was talking about on this restart. We'd probably see it, but as soon as we have the restart and everyone gets a single file, we do have another caution. It looks like it's going to be for a spinner, the number 36, Wally Wilson. He gets turned off of uh, turn number four, I believe, by Chip Dickert in the 04. And this contact happened in a, back, in a battle between 22nd position and company. Wally Wilson was the car who you saw around, tried to go to the inside line and miss the uh, the white and red 04 of Chip Dickert on the inside of the racetrack. 36 tried to fit a race car. A race car done fit, got turned around in response, and that's the reason for the yellow at lap 38. Looks like the 36 just didn't expect uh, the 04 of Dicker there to be to the inside, and apparently uh, Perchette also had gotten turned around as well, and he did over in turns one and two just after that caution, so it could be an either or for that cause of caution, but that 26 had a wild ride coming after number four, actually, it seems. Yeah, so a little bit of a, uh, a snowball effect there. More incidents than what we first caught. So uh, two for one, per se, in that one has us back under yellow. And, you know, Coop may seem like that it's a, a very slow start to this race. And, you know, maybe to an extent there's some truth in that. But we're already almost a third of the way through. Again, 150 laps at a racetrack like Lanier. Not a whole lot. And I think that these yellows are really hurting somebody like a, a William Hale or, or a, I mean, Trombley's been doing a good job. He's gone ninth to third. But I think Hale specifically does exactly what he needs to do. I don't think you can expect him to pass for the race lead every single time. But he's been able to successfully defend second, get in line. And if he can get a couple of laps in, I wouldn't be surprised if the 62 would set something up and go for it. 
And you really got to think about what these guys are going to do on each and every restart and what they're going to try and get an advantage of, of course. You know, these restarts are going to be the best way to do it. Looks like the 88 is going to pick the outside this time, so definitely sees a big advantage. It's gonna, definitely going to be advantageous for him to go. That means that inside won't be going as quickly as the outside will this time as everyone's starting to get formed up. But we'll see what William Hale is able to do on the, on the bottom side on this restart here. His car in this time. Watson trying to get a little bit of an upper hand on the outside of the racetrack this time. He's cleared at turn one. Hale tries to drive it down into the quarter. Can't get there. So Watson stays up front. Hale going to be in the number two position right now. But watch Matt Cocker. The 69 is really liked up top. And he wants to get up there. He's barely got a nose. I don't think that's going to be enough to establish positioning. It will not be. Hale defends second. Cocker does end up third, though. That pesky 45 at Trotley not rolling over though he'll go back to the inside a caution here on the speedway guys looks like the number 08 of race slate he's in the opening of the track that's not a good place to be resting and it looks like that's not where he started having issues but it uh, looks like it happened started happening in turn two with the number nine of randy yokum got three wide and randy was uh randy had no idea he was going to come up yeah, it, it really started back in turn four. He got roughed up a little bit by the six car. And then I don't know if he was going back to deliver the six a message or was trying to tuck in line, but he kind of drove himself over the nose of the 22 machine. And that's why he was so off pace and why we saw that three wide position. And I think at this point, Slate had gotten knocked around a couple of times. Gary really didn't know where he was and just didn't see Yoakum up there because he pinched that nine car up into the outside wall and uh, slid right over by that pit road opening down in turn three. Yeah, it was really, again, just unfortunate. But, of course, this is something that's, uh, again, like, just unfortunate that it's been a little bit of a repeat, more of a single or two-car incident. But it's just everybody being a little bit too aggressive. We're only, we're almost at 100 laps to go. But everyone is trying to go right now and trying to find their position and get going. Or they unfortunately don't, uh, they unfortunately can't hold their line properly and I'm not, I'm not saying that's a bad thing it's just more like like you mentioned that you got roughed up so much that you're trying to get out of the way so much and you don't realize that somebody's there or you don't expect someone to be there so again just very very unfortunate for that 08 to have that happen to him and he'll obviously uh, end up with the worst of all of that because Slade actually now a lap down trying to get that car fixed. Only he and I believe Guillaume Fortin are the drivers off of the lead lap. Guillaume missed the start of this race, was as many as four or five laps down. He's three down at the moment, so he is doing a good job of uh, trying to get himself back up into a competitive position. Just taking this opportunity under the yellow as the lights go out on top of the pace car to remind you that coverage of the Cars Esport Tour on LSR TV is brought to you by Joel Real Timing, the official timing software of LSR TV. Whether you spend your time on the sim behind the wheel, on the pit box, or from the spotter stand, JRT is your go-to software for iRacing timing and scoring analytics. You get the basic pro version today by going to joel-real-timing.com. A lot of slamming on the outside of the racetrack. Jake Watson, second time in a row, he chose the outside and Coop, he did not get going. William Hale to the race lead as all three cars up top were bouncing off each other. Yeah, at first you would think that that was a jump start, but I think the 88 had a problem there. I think he still has a problem. He's lost two spots and was the leader before the green flag flew. So I, either he was still in third, didn't get to the gearbox correctly. No matter what happened, he had a problem of some sort. And this gives the lead to William Hale. And I think he's going to be smiling ear to ear at the opportunity he's going to have to start leading this race. It's, looks like we got some contact behind them. It's a two somehow saving it. Christian Peterson got to the very outside. Three wide. This two has been a what a darn pinball all night, and he's going to get hit again. I mean, that two car is having a bad night right now. They got roughed up at the inside. That also pushed him up and into the outside wall. So he's bounced off high, and he has bounced it off low. Still trying to fight with Melvin. And the yellow flag is going to come out. Looks like behind this race lead group it is. It's the three of Brad Carpenter from 23rd position. The battle uh, for 22nd actually at the time. And when you talk about the 08 mission race slate, uh, looks like uh, he went in there a little bit hard on the inside of the racetrack, got into the three, and Carpenter spun up and into the outside wall. So back under yellow, we'll take a quick opportunity to step aside LSR TV nonstop for you. You're watching our coverage of the Championship Esports Association Cars Esport Tour from Lanier. Close it in on halfway when we get back.
And welcome back live to the Lanier Raceplex LSR TV's coverage of the Cars e Sport Tour. Continuing tonight, we'll put 61 laps behind us in our super late model main event. We get set for another restart. We'll flip flop the front row though. William Hale in control down low. Matt Cocker trying to lead for the first time tonight on the outside as we go back and away, cycle through one and two, and now the back straightaway. Cocker is still there. He's been one of the best drivers up top all night long. I think that would have Hale concerned. 62 looks like he's got the small advantage at the moment though. Looks like it'll become a battle for P2. Well, Hale's taking that line away from the 69. I think he likes the bottom a lot. I think he likes using the full length of the track, so that's why he's not going all the way to the bottom, and it's a smart move by him. It's not an aggressive move. It's a really smart kind of protecting your position move, and, and not a lot of people do that, and they get eaten up by the 69 on the outside. That's a really good, smart move by the 62, and it's allowing the 88 to get past the 69 now. Yeah, so he's leapfrog a spot. That was your pole sitter and race leader, Jake Watson. We had to make that big mistake last restart. Dropped him from the race lead back into that third position. And he is somebody who was very good at holding off Hale, who started behind him for the longest time because the 88 machine was able to be quick down low. So no surprise that that's the lane he utilized to get around Gunker. So we're kind of back to square one. Hale is now your race leader at lot number 66. Watson's there in second. And Cucker is in third for side by side. A bit, little bit back with the seven to Jeff Ward. He's pinned up top, trying to see if he can either win the battle with the 56 or find a spot down on that inside. And a little bit of a brush with the outside wall coming out of turn four. It seems caution is out. Once again on the racetrack, huge accident. Looks like the nine of Randy Yoakum, the 71 of Dawson Fletcher, and the five of Scott Austin are all involved. And it looks like this started between. The 71 of Scott Austin, the 9 of. Sorry, the 71 of Dawson Fletcher, and the 9 of Randy Yoakum just coming off turn number 4. And it was very minor contact to begin with. Uh, it, all of these move scoops seem like they're stemming from late dives down into the corner. You can see those yellow hash marks. Not necessarily the track limits. We've seen some drivers dipping two foot, uh, you know, two toes down uh, on that flat per se. But uh, in that time, the 71 kind of snuck up on the nine. Very minor contact, but it was enough to get the nine out of shape. And well, we're in straight off of a restart. You got to expect that a lot of cars going to be uh, struggling to notice that. Get off each other and that's where a lot of the problems came from yeah, and I, I think for I think for these guys I think this one will be chalked up to uh, just the uh, to an incident with the uh, with the connection the connectivity to the drivers but nonetheless these guys like you said in the back are are starting to get a little desperate here as we're almost to halfway after about 30 minutes of, of racing here and uh, these guys do get uh, you know desperate because they realize how quickly these laps are going off even though we are having uh, consistent cautions there's still consistent green flag right running in here but they are about every uh, about every eight to ten laps of of racing here, and uh, these guys know that they may lose their uh, their spots here. But what's going to deter that right now is going they're going to go to single file restarts, which does help some of the leaders, but is going to really hurt anyone back there in the pack who uh, feels they've got a car to contend for the win here. Well, that's the thing is, you know, we talked about somebody like a Gabe Wood uh, who dropped back involved in incidents early, and Gary, he's been able to get back up to 15th. Your side-by-side -side race starts, so your best friend and your worst enemy at the same time because it's a lot of the reason why you get involved in incidents, but it gives you opportunities to pass. It's going to be a lot more difficult to set some people up from the get-go here, single file, as the lines go out. Yeah, it's going to be very interesting to see how these drivers take these single file restarts as compared to double file. Can't really get the same advantage on the inside lane with a double file restart from the outside lane on a single file restart. So pace car heading in, and we're going to head back green here. William Hale, your leader. And give him an opportunity to safely lead to turn one, and it does. Watson, uh, Cucker, and Doucette all in line. No problems amongst the top ten. In fact, everybody's single file throughout the field. This really not only obviously takes away from passing opportunities, Coop, but it really stretches out the field. William Hale going down into turn one. Chip Dickert all the way at the back of the lead group there, 23rd position, just entering turn three at the same time. So the field's a lot more spread out as well. 
Yeah, you can also see that there's already passing going on uh, this is shows you how racing this track is Christian Peterson goes to the bottom side of the 12 of Devin Morgan and those guys were fighting a lot this gave Christian the opportunity to go heads up with him and uh, passes him pretty quickly and it will take over sixth place but other than that the next place you're gonna be battling for is actually that's that battle is, uh, has actually cleared itself looks like 89 has got around the 54 and then uh, basically it is single file for the most part so this is this is good for those folks up, to, up front who, who want to uh, we want to race a little bit more here at this track, and I think they're going to get that, just that. That's obviously a big key. Hale wants to conquer Doucette, Trombley, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Haven't seen anybody up front mix things up. A lot of side by side a little bit further back. Jeff Ward again seems to not be able to find himself uh, in a comfortable position. And oh, he's almost wrecking the car. So sideways. That time through 1 and 2. And he's sideways again up top. I wonder if that's uh, some damage on that race car affected it, Gary, if he's just really pushing it. It's probably a combination of both sliding once again, almost in the same spot, almost getting the outside wall. There goes Gabe Wood right by him. So that's the 22 of John Lyday. Caution out in the racetrack once again over appears to be in turns one and two. Yellow flag is going to come back out. Race leaders to slow things down. And it looks like it was an incident down at that end of the racetrack. A lot of slow cars trying to work around some smoke and just trying to confirm who the one uh, that went around was in that one. Looks like it's gonna be uh, the first strike of the evening on the driver of the 36. That's what race control was saying. Just past the halfway point now, so as we're under caution for a brief moment, let's take this opportunity to take a look at our iRacing Midway Race Break brought to you by iRacing, the world's premier online racing game with professionally organized racing from NASCAR, IndyCar, IMSA, the World of Outlaws, and so many more. At lap number 82, William Hale is your race leader. He leads Jake Watson, Matt Cucker, Ryan Doucette, and Justin Trombley inside of the top five. Christian Peterson is in sixth spot, Devin Morgan, seventh, Brandon Wilkins, and eighth, Andrew Wooten, ninth, and Corey Helm, tenth. Jeremy Adams finds himself in 11th with Charlie, Mel Charlie Melvin sitting in 12th, Tommy Ryan's in 13th, Gabe Wood is in 14th, John Lyday sits in the 15th position, Scott Austin 16th, Joe Burchett 17th, AJ Rogers in the 18th position with Randy Oakham and Wally Wilson rounding out the top 20. Dawson Fletcher sits in 21st, 22nd, Chip Dicker, 23rd, Brad Carpenter, 24th, Jeff Ward, 25th, Guillaume Fortin, and 26th is Rafe Slate. That's a look top to bottom at your iRacing Midway Race break. For more information on the wide variety of sim racing possibilities online, visit iRacing.com to sign up today. Also, if you go to iRacing.com forward slash membership, you can take advantage of some promo codes that are valid on new iRacing memberships only. All new subscriptions are up to 40% off. Anywhere from a basic three-month subscription for less than $5 all the way up to a two-year. So if you've been waiting to get your iRacing career started now's the time to do it iracing.com forward slash membership and again those deals are valid on new memberships only 85 laps down meanwhile in this race going to be a restart 65 to go single file rules still in effect tail going to bring us back to the american ethanol green flag good jump everybody up front nice and tight to turn one nobody making crazy moves into the corner not yet, at least, as these guys still go single file, and I think this is the best restart the 88's got in a long time. And he's pretty close to the number 62 as they get down into one and two, and I, I'd say that the 88 probably has a stronger car right now, but with the way this race has been going, I have a feeling that he's going to have to try something really good in the 62 because he's been so strong on that bottom, and he's got to get to that outside lane of the track in order to get by him. Right now, I think it's going to be a battle between second before it becomes a battle for the lead. We'll see if that's going to be the case. Jake Watson may be feeling that pressure from Cucker. Needs to get up and try to make a move for the race lead. We saw how quickly Cucker came through the field. In fact, Trombley was doing the same thing not all that long ago also. But uh, a lost spot here, a lost spot there, and a restart a couple of laps ago. And he's back into P5. Again, a lot worse places you could be if you're Justin Trombley. But for how aggressive he was early, sure, he still wants a little bit extra. A little bit of a battle of the double zero of Gabe Wood sideways coming through turns one and two. Had a little bit of contact with the 22 of John Lydon. Those two are battling hard for that 13th place position. And Gabe Wood unfortunately comes out in that 14th place position now of that battle. But my goodness, right now, we've got William Hale, Jake Watson, and Matt Cucker. Hopefully Cucker can actually find a way to get back up into that first place position and 
You've seen Christian Pearson all over the back bumper of the 45 right now. He's all over the 45 machine trying to get a spot off of Trombley. Peterson wants to crack the top 10. I'm at a press coop. The 23 is still running so good. He started back at 24th. You have to expect that's going to come with a little bit of adversity. But, I mean, that Peterson irrigation entry definitely looks like it's been through the ringer tonight. Pretty torn up, but still running on pace with the top five. Yeah, most of that's from that first accident. Remember, he's a championship leader, so him not getting a top five is almost uh, is almost something that he can't ha he can't afford because he's only one point back from or ahead from Jake Watson. So, and then one more point from Justin Trombley, who's guess what, right in front of him. So they'd be tied, uh, or they'd be close to ten points too. But Jake Watson could be the big winner after tonight. He, if he wins, it'll be a great race for him. But uh, looking throughout the field, uh, yeah, that 23 is probably one of the more damaged uh, cars in the whole field. And he's, I mean, he only had one big accident, and that was in the very beginning, but he's able to still wheel that thing around and to try and get a top five from the, 20, 20, from the 25, but he's got to work real hard for it right now. What you expect, though, you got to work it, and, you know, Peterson right there, look there, look to the inside, he gives a shot to the 43, it'll hit Trombley up into Doucette, that was almost an accordion effect, and then they catch up to lap traffic, the three gets stamping out of the way as fast as he can, Brad Carpenter got into the way a little bit, and I think that's what we needed, because that was about to break wide open again, Trombley, trying to go inside on Doucette, almost took him out, slammed the brakes to avoid it, it's getting heated, fourth, fifth, and sixth, man, I'll tell you what, this battle is, like you mentioned, heating up. This is very exciting to watch right now. As I think the 36 got a little bit loose, but right now for the lead to the inside, the 88 of Watson got a little bit loose looking to the inside of William Hale. Right now, w William Hale, or sorry, Jake Watson has decided now is enough time and almost on the back bumper. A little bit of a shot, it seems, to the 62 hanging to turns one and two. Watson wants that lead now. Wants to get it done sooner rather than later. Inside of 50 laps to go from the air. There he goes to the inside of the racetrack. Side by side for the race lead. As Watson, your pole sitter from earlier tonight, wants to get that spot back. He gave up the race lead on a big mistake on a restart. And he's back in front. Watson gets it done at the line and clears hail. And it's almost like the 62 wasn't trying, even though he definitely was. The outside is not his preferred line. And once the 88 got him, it seems like the 62 just does not have the speed now, right now. On the bottom, if not at all, that you can see that he's really trying to make sure he gets back down there. But I think Cucker's got the speed on him too, which makes me wonder if the 69 has speed to get the 88. Problem is, that 88 is going to check out real soon if that doesn't uh, that doesn't change between the 62 and the 69. So Matt Cucker's really got to make work of him pretty quick as there's a uh, there's not, not a whole lot of time. They've got 45 laps to go this time by. The 88's back to the lead. Back out in front of this one for Jake Watson. And again, I talked about how when he was able to maintain a race lead on those restarts, he was so good because he's comfortable down on the inside. Not, you know, no part of me is surprised that that's the first place he went to make the move on Hale. And now that you see that they're past, nope, not going to matter. Caution to flag is out. I was going to say he was going to be starting to pull away. But we've got a spinner. It's Corey Heim in the number 78 car. Looks to be up against the outside wall in turn four. Just a little bit of contact, it seems, maybe just by the 12 of Devin Morgan there, but Morgan was lighting that 89 of Adams by on the inside, and just a little bit of contact to that 78, sent Corey Hum around, just a little bit of a nudge into the outside wall. Doesn't seem to be anything major, but that left front, uh, that left front portion of that car is definitely going to be just a little bit damaged, it seems. That's going to be uh, something that you deal with. I think short track racing, you should expect that uh, the, the sheet metal is not going to be looking as pretty come the end of the race. You saw way by go around that time. Uh, 78 of Corey Heim. That's him trying to get back uh, onto the lead lap. And after after he lost lead lap status uh, after being turned around, could have probably swung that car around. Coop got right back going, but he was in a quite a peculiar position on the outside of the corner that uh, he wanted to stay up there and not get in anybody else's way. So it ended up costing him a lot. But but should be good news if he can get back. He's got to fight Brad Carpenter on that off lap, and uh, with the way the race has been going, I'd say he probably has a chance to get that lap back here as uh, we've, uh, she's going to be uh, fighting with Wally Wilson, I think, too. So 
Uh, we'll uh, we'll just have to see how that uh, how that sorts itself out. But yeah, uh, I'd say with 40 laps to go now, uh, I don't think we're going to see any shortage of action towards the front because everyone knows the time is now. It's going to be a little bit easier for Matt, I think, to be on the bottom and pass because he's going to start there too. So top three, Watson, Hale, Cucker, you got Doucette and Trombley. I think we're going to see uh, just about everyone in their prime, or not their prime, but their comfortable position. Even Peterson on the outside, I think that's where he wants to be. I think the 45 wants to be on the bottom, and I think we've seen Doucette do really good on the top side. So I think everyone's where they're comfortable at except for the 62 here on this restart. Looking at the lights on top of the iRacing.com pace car, and they go out. So restart will come, 112 laps complete, 38 to go in this super late model made event for the Cars Esport Tour. Again, if maybe your first time joining us here at LSR TV and iRacing Live, still to come after this, the late model stocks will take a go for 150 laps as well. So plenty of racing still to come this evening. But we go back to the two by two, and this could be big. Watson decides to go inside for this restart. He'll defend the race lead off the quarter. The 62 of William Hale now not necessarily in P2, saved by a yellow. Cucker was trying it up on him, but a caution flies. Yeah, I'm not sure exactly what that's for, seeing that the seven, 13, the 17 made contact throughout the corner, and not exactly what, uh, what was going on because they were so spread out. Um, I think it's miscommunication on that one, but the 13 came up all the way at the track when they were three wide and created contact with the 17. And that's, well, you go back uh, after a couple of restarts. Gary, single file. Everybody spread it out loosey-goosey. Then you go two by two. You got an incident off of the first lap. I don't think I'm surprised, though. Yeah, it doesn't seem that everybody is uh, really comfortable with running two by two, at least into the corner. Or maybe everyone's being just a little bit too aggressive on the restarts. And if that wasn't an example, then I don't know what is. But that 13, it seemed like... He just decided to throw it in as best as possible. I saw an opening, went for it, but unfortunately he powered it into the corner just a little bit too hard, got that 17 around. So these single fly restarts, however, do, to be, uh, do seem to be giving us a little bit of uh, benefit because it's showing that while these drivers are, it seems like they're a little bit more patient in single fly restarts and when they go double files that it gives them the, it seems to be giving them the mindset that, okay, I have to go now and get whatever, get to the inside or get to whatever line they have to as soon as possible. So maybe in double file, it seems that these drivers are thinking that they have to act a little bit quicker. And that means that they unfortunately don't really are aware of their surroundings as much. And sometimes they hear, but sometimes the spotter calls it out just a little bit too late and they uh, get themselves turned or they accidentally turn somebody in the process. Looks like drivers already doubled up, so they're expecting it to get another restart this time. But good news is caution to flag cycles at Lanier don't take all that long. A caution to flag lap uh, around this racetrack is less than 30 seconds. Still, so quick cleanup. Both the drivers involved in the last accident again, able to roll away from the scene. So let's go back out. We'll do it again. 32 laps left to go. Coop question here maybe just how many more restarts this race is going to have in it, which kind of equates to how many more times can Jake Watson hold off William Hale. Did a very good job last time. We'll see what he can do this time. Tom around, he's on the inside again as we go back green. Answer your question, I think two more at least. So as they go through turns to one and two, and man, a good restart by Jake, but also a good start by Matt Cucker here on the bottom side. This is a better restart than he had last time because he had to struggle just to get to the bumper of the 62. So he's still on the inside, and he may actually be able to hook that bottom right below the double yellow. Well, it's not a double yellow, but it's a dash yellow, and he actually maybe creates a little contact with the 62, but still, they're giving each other plenty of room as the guys behind him go at it too. Yeah, Hale smacked himself off of the wall that time. Cucker almost made this challenge last time. Again, the yellow cut that marched the P2 short. This time, I think he's in a very good position in the Global Comm Toyota. More contact between Cucker and Hale, but Gary, it's not really physical contact. They're just leaning on each other. That's fine. There's one car stopped on the inside wall. That's Wally Wilson just tucked up on the inside of the yellow line down in turn two. No caution yet, and now there is the yellow. Yeah, he was there for a couple laps there. Oh, different wreck, though. Charlie Melvin's the reason for the yellow. I was thinking maybe we were going to see Wilson pull on track, and that's where the yellow would have come from. But Charlie Mike Melvin Gibson, Lane Riggs, sent around down. by the nine car in turn three. It was Randy Oakham who turned him around. That's where the yellow came out. No idea why Wilson, uh, you know, we didn't see that yellow triggered as well back down in turn number two. But 
Erase leaders came by hugging that low lawn and it was awfully tight. Actually, uh, from what I was looking at, yeah, it's really unfortunate that Waller was just sitting there. I don't think he really thought he had enough time to move, but ironic timing there was that uh, race control had actually decided to throw the yellow so they can get that number 36 back going around. So it's uh, quite interesting that uh, an accident happened just as the caution was thrown by uh, looks like it's uh, 13 of Guillaume Fortin has been disqualified. Well, there was a, a rush start tonight for Guillaume. He was four or five laps down, and unfortunately for the 13 machine, he's not going to be able to make it back uh, to the lead lap at all as uh, he was uh, charged with his second penalty on the night. And as it always is in this Cars Esport Tour, two penalties and you are done. He's the driver who spun out Wally Wilson down on the inside of turn two. That's why the 36 was there in the first place. So uh, an interesting decision from the tower there to uh, penalize uh, Guillaume. Obviously, he made the contact and he turned him around, but skeptical that that was actually the contact that triggered a yellow. Nonetheless, causing an incident is a penalty, and Fortin's night's going to be done. He was three laps down in 20 seconds. So uh, a bad night is just going to stay a bad night, unfortunately enough, as it is uh, for him. So we move into the final 25 laps of this race. Matt Cooker didn't complete the pass for second to but he was in front at the moment of yellow. So he'll be on the outside of Jake Watson. Could be good for the 69. Could give him a chance to challenge for the race lead. Or it could set up William Hale to try to take that spot back. Who'll be on the inside of row two. Yeah, we know how strong Matt Cooker is on the outside. But we've also seen how strong Jake Watson is at the bottom. And William Hale's been strong on the, on the bottom too. So we'll see if William's able to do anything to get this position back. Uh, or if he's uh, not going to be able to do anything and have a hard charge from the guys behind him. But I think between these two guys at the front, this is really, really going to be the battle to watch. Green flag back in the air. Could this be the final restart on the night with 22 laps to go? Look at Watson on the inside. The control car didn't get that big of a jump, though. And Matt Cunker has been a formidable force up top. But it seems like in the second half of this race, instead of that racing line spreading out, it's gotten more and more concentrated down low. Watson will clear for the race lead. Cunker, though, able to stay in front of Hale. So don't change his one, two, three. First fight on track for fourth. Trombley and Doucette. Those drivers side by side, almost making contact. It seems coming out turn number four. Trombley stuck on that high side in that number 45 you said. Just cruising along, and there goes Pearson right by Brendan Wilkinson in the background there, that 56. So move Pearson up to sixth place right now, but right now Trombley hanging on to the outside, trying to get that fourth place position whatever way possible. Gonna do whatever he can at this point. Again, it's not about making friends. It's just putting the elbows up and getting what you can. It's crunch time from Lanier with 17 laps to go. Still do set Trombley side by side. Peterson really wants to get by this. He's been sixth for a long time. We talked about the damage that that Dodge is working with, but he wants, I think, that little bit extra. Crack the top five sounds a lot better. You get another tick in the column for top fives on the year, but he can't get around the roadblock in front of him of side by side. Well, we got an accident in the back straightaway, but it looks like it's clearing itself up. No, nope. Randy Oakland's going to come out on the track, and that's going to be the yellow right there. Bring out the yellow flag at lap 135, and... All it does is set us up for another restart, but a tough break for the Don. Randy Yoakum uh, was involved in an incident not all that long ago. He was the one who initiated the contact, arguably, and this time the 54 roughed him up a little bit on the inside. And again, Joe Burchett got in there as well. Gary just couldn't get off of him and kind of pile driven him into the inside wall. That's yeah, so it actually started all the way coming out of uh, turn number two, hanging in turns three and four between Tommy Ryan, the sixth, the 89 of Jeremy Adams and the two of Andrew Wooten. The 89 and 6 were already side by side. Wooten decided to throw it in just on the bottom, making it three wide, making a little bit of contact with the 89. And that made its way all the way through turns one and two. Everybody was trying to get it out of the way. And well, the nine made a little bit of contact with the 54. And unfortunately, just on that bad end of that was number 26 of Joe Burchett. Burchett going to be involved as well in that one. Again, he wasn't able to uh, to get off of him or anything. And not the first time tonight we've seen a couple of race cars hooked together. I think uh, no uh, blame can be addi you know, additionally assessed uh, to Burchett there. Uh, just a tough race in deal race control still reviewing the incident. And uh, if they decide that there was a primary aggressor in that one, of course, as always, they will be issued a penalty. But at this point now, you got to buckle up, Coop. Restart going to be either right on the money at or just inside it. 
10 laps to go. That's what, maximum two more restarts in this one? And Cucker did a good job of maintaining second, but another 69 of Rashid wants to get a win in this thing. Came into tonight fourth in the super late model standings with a win already. He would like to become the first driver with multiple wins. Well, Jake Watson's in the best place to do so. He's trying to go back to back. Watson, your SLM winner from Martinsville two weeks ago. Yeah, and I said we'd probably have two cautions, and so we're at that two caution rate. So if we get another one, then I would have been mispredicted. But uh, I have a feeling that we may not get that tonight. I think we'll get, we're going to get a 10 lap shootout. And I think all bets are off, but we do have the ability to have another caution and restart between now and the end of this. So uh, nothing's uh, nothing's over yet until we've got that five laps to go. Uh, and uh, we'll see which one of these guys is at the front. I know Matt Cucker's going to be on it here, but 88's been so strong on these restarts. Exactly what it's been, his strong suit. And it might just lock him up a race win here tonight from Lanier as well. Green flying in the air. He's already clear by the time he gets to one, but here comes Hale. A fight for second is great news for the 88 out front as William Hale tries to get back into second. Yeah, I'm trying to do again, just whatever he can to at least retain that position on the inside, but Cutler's been strong, it seems, on that outside lane. But right now, as so they head down to turns three and four again, coming now to eight laps to go. I see the 23 of Christian Pearson finally made his way up into now fourth place position. It's spinning the back. Looks like it's going to be the number six of Tommy Ryan. Been a little bit of a rough night for that number six entry, and it all started off a four. He gets into the outside wall. He was funny with the 22 with John Lyday for 11th, and to be fair, Lyday wasn't giving him a ton of room, but when Ryan got into the outside wall, that's what bounced him down to into the 22 machine, and he got tagged then by Gabe Wood uh, going way off into the corner and turned around. Uh, so Tommy Ryan and Gabe Wood get together down in one, and that'll be what effectively will bring us to our final restart, because we're now at lap 145 of 50, or 150, assuming that this lines up, it could be, you know, a one or two lap shootout to the end, depending on if we can get to that white. Yeah, and I, I know this league does have the ability to have its green white checkered, so we'll have to see exactly how that's going to happen when they get it. Um, the best so the best thing to happen was it would be for these guys to finish on the green, but it has been a little rowdy tonight, so they do have that in place, um, and I do believe if it goes over, they'll just stay out. Um, but if it comes before, they'll have they'll go when the pace car is still out there. So either way, they will re they will finish this thing under under uh, at least one green flag checkered here tonight. We'll see if it does come to a little bit of car C Sport Tour overtime. Lights still on top of the pace car, which should set us up for a nice even number. Lights out next time would mean a two lap to go restart. Obviously, you have to get to the white for that to be official, Gary and. Well, the way that this race has gone so far, and I'm sure the way these guys are going to be racing at the very end, that is very much not a guarantee. Yeah, I would say normally that you have to take your time. Well, uh, considering that it's two laps to go, if I was that number 62 of William Hale, I would also be trying to do almost uh, whatever I can within the rule book, at least, and within actual sportsmanship to do whatever I can to get back into the lead. So we're going to see if... That number 62 can stick with Watson here as he chooses to the inside. We're going to see if he can stick with Watson on the restart. We'll see if this is going to be it. 148 laps behind us. Two laps to go in the super lates from Lanier. Side by side to one. Watson down low. Hale up top. Yeah, and you can see the 88 just come up just a little bit on the 62. I think this is really going to be the 88's chance to bring it home again and try and get back to back with white flag coming out. Made it to the last lap. Cocker going to go to the inside of Hale, and that's probably going to be the only fight we see down the back straightaway. Jake Watson clear of the contact behind him. He'll go back to back. Watson, multi-time winner in the SLMs as we wreck across the lawn behind. William Hale falls to fourth as he spins to a stop at the start-finish line. And it looks like Christian Pearson has actually managed to get a podium finish, finishing in third throughout all of that. So he barely avoided the accident just enough to get a nose out, it seems, in front of that number 62 of William Hale. 
close call there, but he does end up in third, so he was able to get that little bit extra, and well, for Jake Watson, again, the key was obviously getting out to the good jump and leading to that white flag, and once they started fighting for second, I think it was over at that point. Yeah, exactly. Once he got clear, it was, it was going to be hard for anyone to contest with him, and I think uh, the top three is going to be official. I was kind of curious on uh, if William Hale's transponder would lose him a couple of positions because it cost him across the start finish line with his rear bumper, not his front bumper. So we'll have to see exactly how that is recorded. But that is going to be Watson, Cooker, and Peterson as the top three. It'll be the uh, official running order, and I think just by uh, looking at a photo finish camera that uh, Christian De Peterson is indeed going to be your third place finisher in this one. So we'll uh, talk with your finishers in a minute if we can get them all tracks on. First, though, quick look top to bottom at your LSR TV full race results for the Super Late Model main event tonight. Watson, your winner. Cucker, second. Peterson in third. We'll be track side with all of them in just a moment. William Hale comes home in fourth. Justin Trombley in fifth position. Ryan Doucette with a P6. Brandon Wilkinson, seventh. Devin Morgan at 8th, Jeremy Adams 9th, and Scott Austin rounds out your top 10. Finishing 11th is John Lighte, Corey Heim, which finishes in the 12th position with Charlie Melvin. 13th, 14th goes to Gabe Wood, 15th goes to Dawson Fletcher, 16th, Andrew Wooten, A.J. Rogers finishes 17th, Joe Burchett, 18th, 19th goes to Tommy Ryan, and 20th goes to Brad Carpenter. Randy Oakham finishes 21st, 22nd finishes Wally Wilson, Guillaume Fortin finishes in 23rd, 24th Chip Digger, 25th is Jeff Ward, and Rafe Slate finishes the night in 26th. No race results in the super late models from Lanier. Let's go trackside. Get a word with the driver of the number 88 machine. Jake Watson is your race winner tonight from the Lanier Raceway. And as you get a word with the driver of the 88 machine, Jake, congratulations on the win. Hold it off there on a lot of those late race restarts. But tell us about really that battle between you and William Hale. He got you on one of those restarts who were up top, mixing it up a little bit. Just got a really bad get go. And at that point, it looked like he might have been pinned behind him for a while. You finally were able to get him back. Just tell us about it. Yeah, it was good racing with me and Will. You know, he's a great teammate to work with. We strategize on those restarts. Um, you know, he'd pick the top, I'd pick the bottom, I'd let him in. You know, just stuff like that. That makes it work. Um, that one restart there, I missed a shift. That kind of cost me a lot. But, you know, that was good racing with him. Obviously, fun and success on a consistent basis. Not the easiest thing to do in this championship. Your win from two weeks ago jumped you up to second in the points, and you go back to back first multi time winner in the SLMs this year. You're going to go to the race or the championship lead, I guess sh I should say, through five weeks of competition. I know that's going to feel good. Yeah, it feels awesome. I really got to shout out uh, Andrew Wooten. Two weeks in a row, he made me a killer setup, and uh, you know, it was, it was on rails all night. Race winner in the SLMs. Jake, before we let you go, sponsor, shout outs. Anybody you want to say hi to? London Recreational Racing, CN Chassis, Ideal Brake Parts, CCEX, Castor Edge, Super Clean, and uh, Kyle Legger for spotting me tonight. On top after 150, Jake, we appreciate the time. Congratulations on this one. I miss Martinsville, so congrats on that one as well. Go to back to back, and we'll catch you down the line. All right, thank you. Race winner tonight in the Super Late Models with the Cars of Sport Tour. Matt Cocker almost got a win and said he comes home in second position. Just shy of a second for him this year in this division. Trackside with him is Coop. Yeah, here with Matt Cucker finishing second tonight, and it seems like you went from sixth to second tonight, and you were kind of there in the bird's nest of uh, the top three all night. Uh, what was the difference between getting to the 88 and being able to pass tonight? Uh, I mean, I think it was the, I had to use more tire up than he did at the beginning there trying to get past the other cars And I mean he started up front there. It was a little bit easier to save But I mean it if I could have been a tidbit looser it might have helped and then I could have uh, Maybe got on the outside of him, but other than that I, he had it locked up Especially on the on the starts there. I mean it just he had me pulled on the starts because of a different gear ratio we ran now this uh, you were in fourth place before this and this is still a good run but you guys are pretty much all together every race kind of really matters on those few extra spots uh, which uh next week it looks like you're going to be going to bristol uh is it going to be a little easier or harder you think to keep uh keep this uh pace up up the front uh, i mean i i hate bristol i mean i didn't do too good last year and 
The, last, the first week at Myrtle Beach in the Supers, we were great, and then we went to, uh, where was it, Irwindale, and we got taken out there, and then uh, last week we were hard fighting for uh, fourth there, and we uh, got turned into the wall by a lap car, so, I mean, all I'm trying to do is just be consistent up front here, and so far it's uh, doing what we want to do. We just need a better random draw on the first starts. All right, there you have it, Matt Cucker, and we'll quickly go down to the next driver on pit road, which is Christian Peterson, and I'll be caught up with Gary Reaver. Christian Pearson, you started a long ways away back around the 24th or 23rd, and you made your way up all the way to third place after that last accident coming up turn number four. You did an amazing job sticking with uh, the field and slowly working your way up through. So how was that race for you? Because that was absolutely amazing performance. Yeah, that, that was, uh, it was pretty wild. I, I messed up my qualifying lap and uh, destroyed the wall of turn four. We were on a good lap, but um, we just clipped it. And then, uh, yeah, just kind of was going to, you know, bide my time early on and just get through the field. And we got caught up in that wreck really early. The 04 was, like, way off pace, and I was just trying to, you know, not waste too much time. I gave him, a, like, a lap and a half to get things figured out. And then he went real wide and got taken out. And then uh, the car wasn't that bad, but... Um, after that, it was just caution after caution and trying to like position yourself uh, on the bottom or towards the end. It was kind of it was a little bit more even, but uh, towards the beginning, you wanted to be on the bottom, and that's really when I got up front. And then uh, we got kind of stuck around sixth. So um, and then I think Trombley missed the shift on the bottom with one of those last restarts, and I was able to get down really quick and get by Doucette, and that put us in fourth. And then uh, we had the, the last restart, and I was able to just, you know, what happened with Hale there, I don't like that, but, you know, it's the last corner, last lap, it's racing. And he luckily just barely edged Hale out for this third place position. So before I let you go, is there anyone that you'd like to thank for your top three finish tonight? Uh, just everybody at Vincia Racing, six man race cars. Uh, Gotta thank Globalcom, uh, Peterson Irrigation, Austin Designs, and uh, Kyle Brummett spotted for me tonight, so thank you. He was definitely helping me go uh, hashtag clear low. So, uh, yeah, just all those guys, my parents, I think they're watching at home, so shout out to them. Well, we are going to go ahead and let you go. Christian Pearson finishing third place here in the Super Late Mall Division here in the RC Sport Tour. So, congratulations, Christian Pearson, for finishing third. Thanks, Gary. Big thanks to our top three for lending us a little bit of time. Again, congrats, Jake Watson, your winner in the Super Late Models. We'll take this opportunity to step aside. When we come back, the sun's going down, the lights are coming on, and we get set to do it all over again. Late Models stocks coming up. You're watching the Cars Esports Tour on LSR TV and iRacing Live. Back to Lanier in a moment. Gibbs and Lane Riggs bring them down to the green flag and we are off and racing yet again this time in the late model stock car portion of the Clover Construction 300. See Ty Gibbs clear Lane Riggs there for the lead. Josh Berry's racing for third with Bobby McCarty in the 22 car and Austin McDaniel's running right on his bumper looking inside. Now, and I want to point out Austin McDaniel rolling the top again around Lane Riggs now for second so there's definitely something out there. Maybe it's just his car working out there a little bit better than some of the others, but uh, drivers need to keep that in their memory bank for the end of this race because that, that may become a factor. And so Where is Lee Pulliam? 23rd position. 23rd right off of turn number four. There he is. The and lead. there you see the gap to the leaders. Ty oh, gets trouble. Oh, trouble turn number turn four. four. Cody Haskins is in it. And we have got problems with a couple of different drivers. A couple of the black cars. Brandon Pierce is in it. Chris Denny is in it. Had some bad luck there, but still a solid run. But speaking of solid, McDaniel nearly solid against the back bumper of Ty Gibbs. Oh, problems, Repco, turn three. He is up into the outside wall. Uh, he's, he's rolling to his door here. He might have the advantage off of turn two, and it looks like he does. Barely, by inches, maybe. He is racing really hard here. He wants this lead for sure. How much can Austin McDaniel now control this race if he clears Ty Gibbs? Because in the past, he's had to run it down from the back. Yeah, he'll definitely be able to set the pace. He's about to clear him, and he does going into turn three. He it stays looked up. to me like he ran really hard at the start of this race. I don't know if they fell off that much this early. He might have uh, decided to calm down because he knew he was pushing the issue a little bit too much. So maybe he's just going to fall in line here and save what he's got. But it looks like Bobby McCarty is going to take advantage of this opportunity as well and get by him. McCarty gets around him, and Gibbs starting to drop, like, drop anchor right now. Uh, 
So you see Dexter Knight, local here to Hickory, knows how to get around this joint for sure in that little Caesars ride. And don't count him out. You see a little damage to the left front, but he has been shoving and pushing a little bit. The whole bit. nose, not just the left front. Yeah, the whole nose is starting to, to come off with from that contact. Incident. From that incident with Ryan Rutko. Oh, we got a spin in turn three and four. Chris Denny around. So turns three and four, problems for Chris Denny. And Pace truck is off. McDaniel to the restart zone, and we are off and racing yet again with car number 12 in front. McDaniel leads, but Craig Moore giving him all he can handle on the outside. Battling back on the top. That surprised me. Austin McDaniel chose the bottom. He was really good on the top, so I'm surprised he did that, especially because Craig Moore had been running the top the whole race and seemed to like it up there, so he may take the lead here. He's certainly given it a heck of an effort. Look at McDaniel, big slide out of turn number two. Huge he run. A, had a handful of wheel, and that gives Craig Moore, like you said, that big run. But look at this guy, saw in the wheel. New leader, halfway. Craig Moore in control here at Hickory. Watch but he is going out that 22 car. Looking at taking advantage of the 57 and the 44, getting lined up on the top. He's going to try and get by both of them here. I could see he was getting aggressive. Problem through. We mentioned it earlier. Dexter Knipe Jr. has sheared the hood pins off. That hood is on the windshield. He is forced to stop on track, and he cannot get any further. That will bring out the yellow. So we're under caution with 69 laps to go. Well, we'll find out. There's still a long way to go on this one. 65 laps. Contact McCarty and Burns. Again, that's the battle for P4 as they work their way through turns three and four. But Will Burns has this opportunity in this Robert Tyler owned car, and I think he is, like you mentioned earlier, trying to take the most or take advantage of it and make the most of oh. it big trouble burn sideways in front of the field somehow everybody gets through it wow what a piece of driving by everyone in this field and will burns brings us under caution with 64 laps unofficially to go good battle these guys have, are always a threat at the end of the race so i'm curious to see what they do here now that the laps are winding down there's 58 to go but uh, they'll work their way up. And now look at Sam Mayer. He was running all the way in 24th earlier, and he's right behind them racing side-by-side -side with Ty Gibbs. Problems. Yellow on the speedway. Turn number two, it looks like. Jacob Hefner around. I didn't see this earlier on Pulliam's car, but look at this. There's concrete dust all on that race car. Yeah, he definitely scrubbed the outside wall. Now he got the battle for third. Bobby McCarty and Tommy Lemons racing hard, and the battle for the lead. Austin McDaniel still trying to get under Craig Moore. I think there's still 38 laps to go. These guys are racing so hard up front, he'll probably have a lot more left at the end of it than they do. For the lead in turn number three, Bobby McCarty pouring it on. Craig Moore has got his hands full now. 37 laps to go in this one, and Bobby McCarty, where did he come from? Saved his stuff, and now he motors around Craig Moore for the point. Here at Hickory Motor Speedway, 36 to go, but don't count out these three. Tommy Lemons is moving forward. Deke McCaskill is coming. Here comes Barry. This thing's far from over. It's just starting to get interesting. This yeah, heat so definitely cool. just cranked up the heat there. He Whoa, just checked Ronald out on Hill him. on the brakes. Did you see that thing? As we are under caution, problems somewhere on the backside of the racetrack. Oh, but it looks like Will maybe Burns. Will Burns had problems. Right. 33 laps to go at Hickory. Brandon Willer looks him over, and we're off and racing yet again. The field zooms by and off of the turn number one. See if Tommy Lemons can work the top. Ooh, it doesn't look like he can. Bobby McCarty is really strong in the Wow, Josh. Josh Berry, three wide into turn three. And he had Craig Moore jacked up off of turn number two. Look on the outside. Here comes Pulliam on the outside rim riding. Wow, he really found something in his race car after that adjustment they made when they came to pit road. Craig Moore, our previous leader, slow on going down the backstretch. Tough break for Craig Moore, possibly something around. Looks like maybe possibly a flat tire. We'll get a report on that from Lindy when he comes down pit row, but it appears Craig Moore's hubs have gone up in smoke. And you can see McDaniel's hands in the cockpit, the wheel back and forth. He is wrestling with that race car. As we watch, look at that car sideways entering turn three. Up the hill wow. he goes. Lane Riggs, motors by. And looks like Austin McDaniel's chances may be over. Meanwhile, with three laps to go. Now, leader Bobby McCarty is in traffic but he's got a big enough lead at nearly two and a half seconds that I don't foresee that being an issue. He works his way through turns three and four, trying to get around Bradley McCaskill, who will pull to the inside and give him a lane to the top. The battle, though, is for the runner-up spot. Barry and Lemon side by side as McCarty comes out of turn number four. He'll take the white flag. Bobby McCarty 
fourth time this year in the Cars Response Energy Tour, looking for his second win. The first win came at Tri-County, and tonight, win number two comes at the Hickory Motor Speedway. McCarty wins at Hickory. Second goes to Josh Berry, third Tommy Lemons, and Lee Pulliam finishes fourth with Deke McCaskill in fifth. <laughs> That one looked like it was a bunch of work out there. What was it like for you? That was tough. Uh, those last 30 laps, I get her everything I had. I didn't have nothing left. We was driving away, but I didn't. I seen the 88 was coming, so uh, I definitely wanted to make sure I was out front and away from him. So in case he got the second, I could get going. So uh, you got to thank all my guys, Nelson Motorsports, the Three Amigos, Honda Generators, all this by Nelson, Tanner Engines. You know, there are a lot of crews that are together. They're close, but your bunch, your bunch, your crew believed in you. Every time I'd go down there, no matter where you were in the pack, they'd say, he's fine, everything's good, we got it, this is gonna be good. What can you say about the family of the Autos by Nelson? That's exactly what it is, we're family. We, we love each other to death. It's, the problem with this sport is it's turned into a business. This isn't a business, this is personal. We wanna win races, we wanna do it together. And, and we want to succeed as a team. So uh, I think that's what makes our team so good is, is, is personal, it's, it's not a business. Personal and love of short track grassroots racing. Bobby McCarty, your winner here at the Car Store Race at Hickory. Welcome back live to the Lanier National Speedway. That's the virtual Lanier National Speedway. As we were aside, you were taking a look at some of the highlights from this weekend's late model stock championship race at the Hickory Motor Speedway in the Clover Construction 130. Bobby McCarty taking home the win. And now we transition back to the esports side of things as we welcome you back into LSR TV's coverage at the Championship Esports Association Cars Esport Tour. On your home for sim racing and I racing live, Evan Fasoko, Austin Coop, Gary Lee with you with Cisco Scarabusa downstairs and we transition now Coop from those super late models to the late model stocks and we take a look at some of the differences between the two cars big thing immediately from division to division on the esports side of things is the late model stocks we're going from open to fix setup on top of obviously the big changes in the cars themselves yeah, the late model stocks are actually a heavier car too, uh, with less horsepower. So not only are they going to have less, you know, less speed in the engine itself, but the car itself is a lot heavier too, uh, which, in my opinion, sometimes creates uh, better races at certain tracks. This is one of those tracks where I think that is the case, uh, especially for as as heavy as they get to the corners and as as slow as they're going to be going. You're going to have to really be careful about how they pitch these cars into the corner uh, and particularly how they how they navigate the bottom and the top because that'll still come into play again we didn't see that much in the super late model but i have a feeling we're going to see that with this car uh, with this track we're going to see that top side just because momentum is key especially depending on uh, how these guys take the corners because like you said it's fixed they don't have to they don't have gear changing to mess with it or anything it's just exactly what the car has everybody has the same car and something that we're going to notice that's similar from what we saw a little bit earlier on with the super late models to this and the late model stocks as well, Gary, is a lot of familiar faces, good chunk of the drivers competing in both. So pretty quick transition for them to have to switch from car to car. Of course, a lot of these names are the guys who we've seen do the Roto Beast Simulation Series with a bunch of different cars, the CEA Weekly Dirt Series as well, which has a bunch of different cars. So if they can focus on just two, which on the sim, you got infinite options, not that bad, but 
They're going to have to make a quick transition to hop it back into late model stock mode without having a chance, as you see, as the car sit on pit road, not able to go out on track and get any sort of additional practice in before the green either. Yeah, it's a little bit of a different atmosphere here, too. As again, we are under the lights here, so it's going to be quite interesting to see what they can do in both a different car and in a different uh, time setting, or in this case, I'd say weather perspective, whatever you want to title it as. But we are definitely going to be seeing uh, some people, probably some faster lap times as well. I saw the fastest lap time as a 13.0 in the daylight in the last race in the super lights. So we're going to see if anyone can match that time or maybe even beat it as the grid is now starting to get set up. Pit car is going to be released from the pit lane. They are on track. Obviously, you can see the sun has gone down and the lights have come on. Let's do a little bit of night racing from the Lanier National Speedway. Let's go tracks out and take a look at your LSR TV starting grid. For the late model stocks, James Milbockler will start this one from Paul, the driver of the 61 Chevrolet, bringing us to the green flag, along with the idiot of Jeremy Adams on the outside of the front row. Brandon Wilkinson will start third with Kyle Edgar in fourth, and Joe Burgett up inside of the top five. Starting sixth place, Matt Cucker, then Tommy Ryan, seventh. Ryan Doucette will start his number 77 green machine in the eighth position, and Randy Oakham will start ninth with Christian Peterson to his outside in tenth. Starting 11th, it's going to be the number one of Chad Bass. Starting 12th, it's going to be to his outside, Scott Austin at number five. John Lydie starts 13th, 14th, Todd Novosad. And 15th, it's going to be Devin Morgan. We're going to get ready company to Cam Davidson on the outside of row. A read run down, Joshua Cox, 17th and 18th position to Brad Carpenter, 19th, Sean Cross. Outside of row 10 and 20th. And Wally Wilson at the back in 21st. So just a slightly smaller field from what we saw in the SLMs. Coming into tonight, the late model stock championship standings led by Matt Cucker. Two wins on the year for him. In fact, the last two at Myrtle Beach to Martinsville. He comes into tonight with a 13-point advantage over Christian Peterson, who's second. David Morgan, Jeff Ward, and Tommy Ryan through the top five were the only other late model stock winner so far on 2018. Pace car down at end, though. Got a little bit of taste of what's to come in the SLMs, but it's the LMSC time as we go green from Lanier, and we're off race in a fourth race of the season for these guys. And before the green flag dropped, or before they even got to the start finish line, they were already hitting each other, so these guys are ready to go, but my goodness, some of these guys didn't go, or some of these guys went early, and it was a uh, complete mayhem almost on the front straight away, but everyone keeps it steady. These cars are a little bit easier to drive. Like they're a little bit tighter typically on on the corners, especially at a track like in the near, but it's typically a little bit sta more stable here as we're seeing these guys go side by side for the third position. Looks like the number 99 is going to try and go to the back and down to the bottom. It's Kyle Edgar starting from fourth place, but he had to check up for the 89 right there. Jim Ray Adams right there in the corners. They go side by side behind him now. Matt Cucker to the outside. Cucker looking up on the outside of the racetrack as he tries to close the deal here with the 99 of Edgar. The 99 very much has better positioning at this moment. Cocker used the outside early in the super lanes. It appears that it works into heavier LMSCs as well. Still side by side. This one is for fourth position. Don't look now. Battle for the race lead. Here comes Wilkinson. He'll choose the bottom as his method of transportation. And he gets up and around Milbockler rather quickly. Leads at the line and clears now to the back straight away. Amazing job by that number 56 of Wilkinson to get by, but still side by side for fourth as Kyle Edgar is just coming out on the advantage right here, coming after number four. And Cucker trying to hold on to that outside lane, trying to hold on to that fourth place position. Can't get it done. Now he's got the 26 of Joe Perquette right under him. Yeah, tucking by on the inside of the racetrack there for the 26 of Burchett trying to jump on the 99 machine. He's kind of stuck here in a position where, well, I can't go high, I can't go low. I'm just going to have to choose which lane I want to be with. It appears the 26 has got confidence in Edgar and he better because, again, obviously, side by side, Coop, not the fastest way around the track. The longer this fight goes on, the more cars they're going to catch up to the back end. And that 77 of Ryan Doucette, that bright yellow entry gets into the mix as well and gets either up top or down low on the 26. And that battle then ends up being won by that lane in front of him. You can end up losing out on a couple of spots if you're Burchett. Yeah, and looking at this battle between Edgar and 
Cucker. Cucker's got the advantage as he typically does on the top side, but Edgar has been pretty strong. These guys have traded some paint here and there a little bit, and uh, Cucker was on the receiving end one time, and the most previous one, Edgar, was on the receiving end and lost a lot of the front end of that car, and that's kind of where you're seeing the difference, but he's kind of brought it back up, but these guys are racing really, really close. There's not a whole lot of room between these guys. And it's a good, good fight for fourth, but I think both these drivers are, are both fast. And you're going to see the 69 just good back to the bottom. Knows that the top side is not where he wants to be if he wants to get these tires under him. But I think they're both faster than the 89 right now. Faster than the 89, but you have to complete that move. And for the time being, Adams is going to be able to maintain in third. There's the two sets of two by two now with Doucette now on the inside of the 26 of Burchett. So side by side we are for fourth. And 4-6 spot. Oh, contact with a 77. Pushed up a little bit. Got into the 99 of Edgar. But this is what I was talking about in reference to that 26 of Burchett, Gary. As he went up high, left the 77 to go down low. It cost him two positions because now that car and the 23 of Peterson have both gotten around. Burchett falls to eighth. And Burchett really on the downside of things right now, but that 77 of Doucette trying to get by Edgar in that 99, almost making a little bit of contact on the after number two. They're still side by side. 99 almost gets into the back bumper of Matt Cucker there through the corner, down the front straight away once again for the 17th time as of right now. And still Kyle Edgar is trying to hang on to that position or at least whatever he can at this point. And at this point as well, we're only 17 laps into this race, but definitely a much better start for these uh, late model stocks that we saw earlier tonight in the super late models. Already catching some lap traffic. That's the 34 a ton. Novasad outside is getting lapped. You'll also see a damage to Bernani to a Cam Davidson in the mix as well. It's another lapped car that your race leaders are working by. The 77 and Doucette really the uh, driver who I think is going to be most concerned about that because that's where the side by side is. The 99 of Edgar down low. So I'm sure they like to wrap this battle up quickly. And the 77 Cube's been within a couple of feet of clearing the 99, but still unable to do it. And right there, watch. Lap car up top. I thought the 99 was going to set a pick on him. They'll squeeze in three wide. A tight call there. Oh, and there you go. Contact. The 77 and set came up on that lapped car, put himself in the wall. Yeah, I'll be honest with you. I don't think the 99 gave him a whole lot of room to have errors. So I'd, I'd almost say that's on the 99, but that's also a lot of short track racing that you'll see. So it, it not a whole lot of blame, but, you know, wrong time, wrong place in a, in, a, in a certain kind of way, but really hurt the 77. If he uh, wanted to do something about it, he might have said something over the radio or may have, may have like, tried to nudge the 99 down. But at that pace and how fast you're going, you sometimes can't see how quick that lap traffic is coming. So he's got himself a lot of right side damage and lost a lot of momentum, not both on the track and mentally, I'm sure, as well, as he's letting a lot of drivers go by right now. It's not what you want to see if you're that driver. So these guys coming on the inside, looking like they're going to maybe get some, uh, get some passing done. That's the idea, to keep the ball rolling again. We talked about it earlier tonight. Never came into effect. 40 laps uncontested. And Green Flag Racing would bring out a competition caution. We're more than halfway to that point now. Working lap 25 of 150 overall. We would only see up to two of those competition yellows. It could be at 40. It could be as late as 80. But you would not see one at lap 120 because the competition yellow rule is no longer in effect once you get into the final 40 laps of the race. So enjoy it while well, you can see it right now Brandon Wilkinson that 2.6 second advantage that your race leader has is soon to be evaporated but the battle is who's going to be P2 and this could be a big move because it'll determine if you're inside of the back row there in second or if you're on the outside of the front row for the cup coming to restart depending on who wins out in this fight and it might not just be between these two keep a half eye on Cucker there as well sneaking into the picture right there in fourth yeah, Matt Cucker's just waiting. He's probably going to strike at uh, whatever these two drivers least expect it. Right now, Cucker's giving him just a little bit of space right now. Just letting them battle it out just a little bit because Cucker knows that there's still just a little bit of time. And right as I say that, there goes the 61. Here comes the lap car, the number 36. That's Wally Wilson going to squeeze it three wide entering turns number three and four. That's going to send the 61 now side by side with Cucker. Amazing placement by Cucker there. Like I said, waiting for that perfect moment. And he's found it right now. So now, once he gets by that 60, 61 of Millenbacher, which should be here in just a couple of laps, at least right now, as I head down to turns 1 and 2 again, now he's going to set his sights on Jeremy Adams. 
Jeremy Adams seems to be uh, the focus of a lot of the attention here as he was able to get back into the number two position. So right back in line with where he started, Kunker was able, as you noted, to be able to get up into third. So if the 69 continues to press, he could pick up a fourth spot on a still very young race uh, as he is now unchallenged from behind. Bill Bockler settling into fourth and then a little bit of two by two. Ryan Doucette again side by side with Kyle Edgar. I think these guys have been door to door for the better part of the race. Oh, there's going to be a lot of contact. The 99 drives the 77 up and into the wall. Somehow everybody can hang on and now Peterson roughs up the 99 of Edgar and he'll take away fifth from him. Yeah, the 99 just lost the front end, and now he's going to get spun because he's cutting down the track. He's driving a little bit too aggressive right now because right now he's lost a lot of spots, and he basically threw the 77 in the outside wall, and now he's cutting these drivers off, and he can't do that. He still has a good-looking car out there. He can get right back at it, but the 77 looks destroyed right now. Coming through turn three and four, and so he's going to have to get right back on the horse and try it again. While all this is happening, guys, I, I think it's, it's, it's going to be important to know how far away your leader is. But considering that, we do have a 40 lap, uh, uh, 40 lap limit on green flag runs. So and just here in a little bit, we'll see a competition yellow. But Brandon Wilkinson absolutely checked out with a four second lead. He is absolutely gone, and it is going to be short-lived, but I want to talk about some fireworks, Gary. We're going to see him at the end of the race. Didn't think it would be happening this early on. Look at the battle with Milbockler and Doucette. Wow, the 23, sorry, of Peterson. He just loosened up Milbockler, straight moved him out of the way in that fight for P5. That's short track, and now the 26 is going to get a piece of it. The round goes to 51, and that's going to send out a 26 of Joe Burkett. No caution as of yet. There's the caution. This is most likely going to act as that 40 lap competition limit. And uh, Burchett tried to get back around, use the bumper as well, but unfortunately that didn't pay off to his favor like it did for the 23. Yeah, one more lap, but we would have actually gotten that competition yellow. Instead, it's for an accident. And well, the contact with the back of the 61 there wasn't all that different from what Peterson did. So Peterson roughed him up and made a move. But I think uh, the 26 of Burchett was thinking, hey, I'm coming to two laps to go before I know there's going to be a yellow. I really want to get this position. Uh, he was seventh, wanted six. That would have moved him up an entire lane for the restart. Unfortunately, it'll send the 61 all the way around. And that should land Burchett a penalty. And it'll prevent us from getting to the competition caution break. But it'll basically act as one as we're under yellow now at lap number 40. So the previous points he made about you're not going to see any competition yellows any later than lap 110 uh, will remain true. But that was a great opening run there, Coop, in that race. A lot of excitement ended with a yellow, but you nearly knocked a third of this race out of it. Oh, yeah, and it happened fairly quickly. But I do I do want to say that the, the contact on the front stretch with Peterson and the contact with uh, it turned three and four is, is completely different just because of where he hit him. Peterson hit him straight on the on the on the on the Chevrolet logo, and the 26 hit him right on the uh, on the taillight. So that's why the 61 went around there. Com completely different uh, on, on that one. But uh, it doesn't really matter when you're turned around and and has a lot of damage, which the 61 does have. And he started on the pole, so it really that's a that's a tough pill to swallow here uh, when you were up there so close and doing doing a good job. So. Uh, might be uh, might be something to come for the 61 in the end of this one, but right now he's going to have to have a long uphill battle. And not maybe as much time as you would like to think. It's only been 12 minutes, uh, Gary, since the green flag drop. Feels like it's been a lot longer than that as the lights go out and we get set to go back green just like that. But uh, this race is really hustling on through. Restart will come with 44 complete and 106 to go. Yeah, 11, uh, sorry, 12 minutes within this race, and we're only right now 44 laps in, just about to get 45 once the base car pulls off, about 13 or so seconds per lap, pace car two pit road, Brandon Wilkinson in the lead, he is down and away, and here they go back to turn number one, and all over the back bumper is Cucker. He is all over him, off into the corner. Wilkinson going to have to try to regain that big advantage. He started third, but got to the race lead. Dyson quickly set sail, and he's already pulling big gaps off of the corner with the first lap complete. And a quick caution this time. Yellow flag is out. It's problems with the nine of Randy Yoakum. Yeah, and I think we saw this happen not just not just once, but this is the second time I think we've seen this evening uh, once in the last race. But one driver gets slightly tagged out of turn four, and then they just can't get off of him. And I think 
Once the one was hooked up in the night, he just it knew the caution was coming out. Just should have just completely just got on the brakes because there's nothing they could get it done. But there's so many other drivers that are just kind of pushing in anyways. They just couldn't get off of them. They got stuck together, and it ends up being like nine different incidents. Even that 06 machine struggled to get on by the 41, the 36. So a couple of other cars in and around there, uh, unable to get off of each other. And of course, we talked about the differences we saw earlier tonight. The super lates and the single file, the double file restarts, Gary. Can't say I'm surprised that we get one of those incidents tonight. First one uh, off of a restart, obviously, after we went 39 laps the first time. So we go from long runs to a nice quick one, and we'll set up and do it again. Yeah, it looks like it seemed to be just uh, this time of both a combination of trying to get to whatever position, trying to get to whatever lane as quick as possible, but also just being a little bit too eager to get to that position that you felt realize that other people want that same position as that same lane that you have. And of course, that's just a, a bit of a battle for, if you will, on track real estate. So. You can only put so many cars in so many places at a time, but luckily this is only the first incident caution that we've had of the night so far. First one uh, so far, and the lights will stay on top of the pace car one more time. I thought we might have gotten a quick one there and had gotten back underway. We will go past one-third distance in this race. Restart going to come up uh, with less than 100 laps to go. Of course, total lap counter up at the top right-hand side of your screen. You can follow along as we continue to work deeper into this one. 19 cars on the lead lap. David Morgan is 38 laps down in 21st. Then the Wally Wilson is only a single lap down in 20th. And so far, nobody's gone behind the wall tonight from Lanier in the late model stocks. Yeah, I don't know if that'll say the same way, of course, tonight as it is starting to amp up with that first caution. It was going to happen anyways, but it did kind of start the action here as we are getting to the one-third mark. As we just rolled over it, so we'll have just a little under 100 laps to go here when we get the green flag. His car in, green flag in the air, 51 laps complete from Brazelton, Georgia. Close it in on the end of tonight's coverage here as we continue to work deeper and deeper into what so far has been a treat of a race in the late model stocks. Look at Brandon Wilkinson, best car all night, clear on the outside of Adams. And as a fight, he leaves behind him for a second. He should be able to pull some distance. Look at Cucker all the way down to the inside of all that time. All four tires on the apron. Yeah, he's done that twice now, and I think he really likes it down there. I think there's something to be said about how much you can rotate a car, but that's going to bring out, well, this is going to bring in a caution. Oh, big wreck out of turn number four. Joshua Cox is turning around backwards. The 61 once again is involved, and I think the 61 might have, uh, yeah, might have caused this one as well, or might have been a part of this one as well. Looked like he's the one that caused it, maybe. Got it in a little bit hot. He gets up into the 06 of Joshua Cox. Pretty clear cut that one. Both cars go around, and we're under the third caution of the evening. So as we pace once again, what we'll do is we'll step aside for a quick moment and come back for the race start on the other end. Brandon Wilkinson, so far so good. He leads in a late model stocks. You're watching the Cars Esport Tour on LSR TV in iRacing Live.
Right back from Lanier National Speedway on LSR TV. The lights on top of the pace car are out and we get set to, to go back in arena flying conditions. 59 down of 150 in this late model stock main event. Evan Pasoko, Austin Coop, Gary Weaver upstairs with Cisco Scarabusa downstairs. Happy that you're with us at your home for sim racing and I racing live. Back underway we go. Green flying in the air. Side by side down into one and two. It was a very good jump for Adams Topsod, but an even better jump for Cocker for the inside of road two. He wants to go to second and he's almost clear. Might get it this time down in one and two. And if you're Wilkinson, you got to think about that long green flag run you had, that four-second lead. Maybe you should have uh, saved a little bit more tires on that one because now Cucker's already there, and you need everything you can typically get to uh, to stay in front of him, and he might go three wins this uh, for this series if he's uncontested, and I think Brandon Wilkinson's going to be a good factor in, uh, in holding him up because the 56 has been fast all night, but he did have that long run and that long speed earlier on as we have a battle looking to be just inside outside of the top five Ryan who said trying to hold off Tommy Ryan the number six he's on the outside and you got uh, some battling behind him as well but that 77 my goodness he is all but completely destroyed but hey the engine's not destroyed and short track racing he's gonna keep going yeah, that's all you can do is just keep on going. So you lick your wounds and you do what you can, but definitely dropping back those spots, not going to help anybody out. Just looking for big movers. Never mind. Caution flag at lap 67, 64, should say, sorry. Randy Yoakum in the nine car again, as his night goes from bad to worst. Yeah. Um, oh, sorry. Go for it. Yeah, looking at the replay, it looks like the 06 of uh, Joshua Cox just drove it straight in there. Didn't really expect the nine of randy arms to really check up for that three brett carpenter but there's really nowhere that the nine could have gone so josh is uh joshua cox is going to get that penalty, eol penalty uh, as a result of that and it should be noted that the nine car of yokum went to the apron in one and two at the opposite end of the racetrack and move the uh, 06 out of the way very aggressively. So I don't think you can say that the reason the 9 got hit was because he was checking up for the car in front of him. It looked like the 06 didn't appreciate what happened a few seconds earlier. Yeah, he uh, did not get on the brakes as soon as I think he normally did. But at the he same accidentally time, hit the clutch. He thought he was hitting the brakes. He just, you know, he missed. I, uh, I'm not exactly sure, but the, I think for him, it's lucky there was a check up in front because I, I'm, exa I'm not exactly sure as well. So we'll have to uh, see if that continues to straighten itself out. I, I think the 06 has a ton of front end damage, and the 09 or the 9's been <laughs> basically uh, been a darn hitting bag all night. I mean, in the last race and in this race, and I think earlier this week too in the RSI race, it's. It's kind of been the uh, spin no the spin the number nine out week, uh, which is not good for him. He's had a had a lot of good races here, but uh, he's been a battering ram for a lot of guys tonight. And to, and to go back to that point of the battery ram, it kind of ties in, Gary, with what I was going to talk about before that yellow came out, the fact that Christian Peterson had started 10th, he's up to 4th. It's not a huge swing. Somebody like a Sean Cross is up 9 spots, but back in 11th. But, of course, you know, each position worth a little bit more the closer to the front you are. Peterson did the same thing earlier tonight, the super late models, but the cart was really beat up. He was able to sneak away with a third. That's where he is now. But the point I was going to make is he's making, or yeah, he is in third position, sorry, with the 23 machine. Uh, scoring looked like it was a little bit off. Adams is going to be put back in that position. So Peterson should be fourth, I believe, uh, when cycling does update through. Uh, but the key I was going to point out there is Peterson's made up a good amount of spots, but the car's still looking good, still looks nice and competitive, which is something he wasn't able to really have that last time around. Green flag back out for Brendan Wilkinson, that 56. And just to expand on that just a little bit more, you are right. But right now, side by side is going to be Cucker on that high side, trying to get whatever he can. Looks like a little bit of contact hanging in turns three and four, just entering the corner. But that 56 of Wilkinson will pull away with that lead, but not quite so not quite so quickly as Cucker still tries to hang on. Just barely in front gets that 56. In the longest challenge we've seen about it for the driver in second. Cucker back to the bumper. Doesn't dive at a line, though. And will consider a lead in this one. Peterson wins out in that fight for third and fourth. So he goes technically up a spot, fourth to third, passing Jeremy Adams. And Adams still down low. Going to have to deal with another challenge. This time from another familiar foe in the six of Tommy Ryan, who's up top in that yellow and black entry. 
And it's also got to worry, uh, worry about Ryan Doucette behind him because Doucette still has speed somehow in that uh, in that machine, and he could make it three wide. I think he has the ability to. I think he's, I think he's at the at the point where he knows this next lap's halfway, and it's not a very uh, a very good idea to do that. But at the exact same time, I mean, the 77 has been fast. He's gonna get around the six right here on the bottom side. He's gonna put the nose in on the 89, and he might get two guys right here in a very short amount of period of time. But the 89 actually pretty much a pitch and pretty close to the bottom so a 79's got that bottom hooked up and he looks like he's gonna get right by the 89 at least he has the preferred line right now Sam Davidson lost the engine coming to the restart so he will drop out of this race first driver to officially retire at lap number 77 looks like Devin Morgan might be calling it quits as well the heavily damaged number 12 is limping down on pit road but of course we follow these battles up front that on and Edgar is gonna get tagged what a save after he got hit by Reed Rundell the on and on was all but into the inside wall he'll hang on masterful job to stay in it he, that was an amazing save by Kyle right there, and he still keeps it going forward. Didn't really get major damage, and getting a little bit close to that 22. Oh. He's going to turn himself in contact with the five. There they go around in turns three and four. Basically, they're going to come to a stop. The whole racetrack is blocked. The three of Carpenter is going to get turned, and there is the yellow flag. Yeah, and I th I think a lot of people are uh, I think a lot of people are upset because they think the uh, 99 went to go back for it, uh, go back to the five and give him a retaliation. But what he forgot was the 22 was right there, and then he wrecked the five, and um, the five was basically no part of that really at, at some point. But a, a big mess. But I think race control is gonna, going to have to take a look at this because yeah, it does it does kind of look like the 99 just had no regard for the 22 and just straight up went went for the five, but. Nonetheless, we are under caution once again, and I've cautioned three cautions, but I think that one could have been a little bit prevented. It was a long go to one. Finally, though, they wrecked him. Garnet able to stay off of each other, and we slow things down first time tonight in the second half of the race. Let's take this opportunity, as we always do, cross halfway to look at our iRacing. A bit of a race break brought to you by iRacing, the world's premier online racing game with professionally organized racing from the likes of NASCAR, IndyCar, IMSA, the world of outlaws, and more. At lap 83, Brandon Wilkinson is your race leader ahead of Matt Cucker, Christian Peterson, Ryan Doucette, and Jeremy Adams in the top five. Tommy Ryan right now, sixth spot, Reed Rundell. Is seventh, Sean Cross eighth, Chad Bass ninth, and Joshua Cox rounds out your top ten. In the eleventh position is Kyle Edgar, and I think he's going to be going to the back of the field, so he'll shortly be there and scored there. Then you've got John Lyde, Jones Milbachler, twelfth and eleventh, uh, Joe Birch at fourteenth, Todd Newstat, uh, Novastad. Uh, Nova Sad, I should say, is in the 15th position. Scott Austin, 16th. Randy Yoakum, 17th. Fred Carpenter, 18th. And then they round out the rest of the field. Wally Wilson, Cam Davidson, and Devin Morgan. They are multiple laps down. Look top to bottom at your iRacing to midway race break. For more information on the wide variety of sim racing possibilities online, you can visit iRacing.com to sign up today. And as we mentioned earlier, iRacing.com forward slash membership, the place to go if you are looking to get your sim racing career started. 40% off all new iRacing memberships. Again, iRacing.com forward slash membership for more information information inside of the window now as we restart with less than 70 to go in this race no more competition yellows because once you go 40 well we're inside of the final 40 at that point so that's not going to be a factor for the rest of this so how do we race this one out as we go back green nose to nose for the race lead and that's the best restart cuckers had all night from second and you gotta imagine that Cucker is one one of these times gonna get a good run off those corners, but 56 has been very very strong on the bottom and has just been able to put those left sides just enough on the yellow on the yellow line to make it work out. And I think he's not overdoing it and he's putting the left front first, which I think is a little bit interesting. But he's actually able to get that car started to get right in the corner, but. Right now, it's just kind of a, I think, a little bit dead even, but the 56 does edge out ahead. But look at Ryan Doucette. It doesn't matter whether he's got a car that's almost completely destroyed. He's still in fourth, and I think he's skating on these guys. Either that or Peter Sitz is just kind of waiting to see what's going on. But he's actually really, really, really getting these guys up front. 
And that's all you can hope to do is just keep them within touch of you. Again, there is a chance, very slight chance, albeit, that this race could go all the way to the end because we are no longer in a situation where there would be any more competition in yellow. So I don't think you can sit back. Not that you can't pace yourself, Gary, but you can't sit back, let somebody get away, which is why I think Cucker's battling so hard up top. He doesn't want that 56 to pull, you know, multiple seconds out in front like he's done a few times. And I think he's going to, I think he's also got to worry about that number 23 that's at the moment just running behind him, running that inside lane right now. Just watching this battle out. A little bit of contact with turns three and four. That's going to serve as his downfall. And now he's going to swerve in the 23. Everyone's trying to figure out where to go. And unfortunately, out of all of this, the number 69, Matt Cucker, will fall out to fourth place. But look at Christian Peterson. He made the timing perfect. And now he's up to the lead. Peterson's the one who went flying up on the inside. He is now your race leader. Wilkinson falls to second for the first time since the opening 30 laps or so of this race when he made that charge up front to set third. And as you mentioned, Cucker, the big loser, drops two into P4. Peterson taking advantage of getting those spots earlier, keeping the car cleaner. All points we already made, Coop, but he really kind of jumped the line queue. Went right third to first. Curious if that car is right on par with the likes of Wilkinson. I think that 56 was really being held up by Cucker. Now that he's single filed, I expect him to kick it back into gear. Oh yeah, big, big mix up here at the front and that was, that was really fun to watch and really, really fun to see how that was going to end up and they all kept it forward and I think uh, with these guys keeping it straight just shows you the skill that all four of these guys are front and, and even with all of that, Jeremy Adams still was not able to get in the picture. Uh, just these guys up front, all four of them, just the, they're the class of the field right now, and the cream has ri risen to the top. And uh, Jeremy Adams is fast too, but he's just not that that extra fast that the guys in front of him are. And he's also got to uh, he's also got to hold off Tommy Ryan behind him, as I think we got uh, the number 22 of John Lyde is trying to bring it down pit road as he. Uh, has blown the engine tonight. That's what all the smoke's from. And yeah, he's on the pit road and looks like his night's going to be over with. Yeah, lost that engine while battling in ninth position. A lot of smoke on the racetrack as well. He lost it at the far end of pit road, or rather I should say far end of the racetrack for the pit road entrance. We are going to get a caution though. It's not from all the smoke on the 22. Another incident's going to be somewhere on track. I was going to say that maybe all the smoke from Lyde was going to put somebody in a rough position because he had to tiptoe around the track, but I think everybody was able to get down pit road, and this one was Randy Yoakum in 14th position. He got sent for a ride with the 99 of Kyle Edgar and this one might be a tough one for race control to call Gary the 99 gets hit by the three of Carpenter pushes the 99 into the nine so I think all of this might fall back on the Carpenter yeah the 99 couldn't really do anything about it and yep confirmed as of right now Brett Carpenter has gotten that EOL penalty so nothing that Kyle Edgar really could have done at that point when he got bumped by the three he got sent sideways and Randy Yoakum, unfortunately, was just in the wrong place at the wrong time. Well, right place just at the uh, incorrect time as uh, that set of events had unfortunately sent him to the outside wall. So as of right now, Christian Pearson, Brendan Wilkinson, Ryan, you set top three. So amazing move by Pearson from earlier. That was a nice move. That's what's got him out in front of all of the chaos. And, well, now we're past two-thirds of the way in this one into the final 50 laps up from Lanier. In this late model stock main event for the Cars Esport Tour. As we work under yellow, reminding you, as always, that coverage of the Cars Esport Tour at LSR TV is brought to you by Joel Real Timing, the official timing software of LSR TV. Whether you spend your time on the sim, behind the wheel, on the pit box, or from the spotter stand, JRT is your go to software for iRacing timing and scoring analytics. You can get stuff the basic download today or buy the full pro version. All that info and more by logging on to joel-real-timing.com for more information. Lights out on top of the pace car. 46 laps to go, Coop. I'm going to go out on a limb and say this ain't the last restart. Oh, yeah, definitely not. And you can definitely tell with those two up front, yeah, this uh, this might get really fun and interesting, that seeing, knowing that these two up front have had some, uh, had some heated battles in the past. So I'm looking forward to seeing what goes on here as we get a restart on 104.
Restart two up. Let's look for the 23 of Peterson to get a much better go this time. Want to leave the 56 of Wilkinson behind him. He's got the inside. It's the better place to be. He will clear Wilkinson. The big thing now is can Doucette challenge for second? I don't think he's going to be able to get the positioning. Wilkinson tries to come down. And the 77 says no. Pushes him up the racetrack. And now he'll take second. Yeah, and the 56 actually backed out of that completely. That's a smart move, but now the, the 69 moves the 77 up the track, and so that's going to lead the 69 to the, to the bottom of the track. But now we're going to have a caution, so that's going to change everything. We're going to have, uh, looks like the 99. Yeah, 99's blown up on the uh, in turns 1 and 2, I think. Yeah, Kyle Edgar uh, ended up pretty hard into the inside wall. There was two wide up top, and it just kind of drove into those two cars, maybe expecting that 60 to Bill Buckler to be good all the way up to the wall, but I mean, Bill Buckler couldn't do that. Sean Cross was up there, and uh, Edgar comes slotting down to the inside, hits the inside wall. That's why you saw all the thick smoke. He didn't blow an engine uh, like the last time. Things got a little bit cloudy here at Ladere. So a single car accident. He's already been involved in the accident. Penalty not going to hurt him all that much more. And it takes another four or five laps of green flag action out of this one. But another change to set to second. Cucker to third. And a Brandon Wilkinson needs to find some clutch here late because he's gone for the race lead to fourth pretty quickly. Yeah, it's not the first time that he's fallen back to this uh, position here either, especially after, uh, again, just that exciting pass that Pearson had. But right now, Matt Cucker, he used the bumper on that, uh, 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 what I believe to be was a 77, just a little while before we got that caution. So I don't think that Matt Cucker would be afraid to use that same tactic on Christian Pearson if given the chance because Cucker's going to be starting behind Pearson so it's going to be your typical uh, short track racing here using the bumper whenever you can at the uh, right time so I believe the 77 do set however was actually roughed up earlier and he was roughed up a little bit earlier by Pearson so maybe do set can if he can find a way to the inside and in front of Matt Cucker maybe uh, we're going to see do set return that favor is short track racing so gives you an opportunity to maybe take things into a, a little bit more of your own hands we've seen both sides of that spectrum tonight Coop we've seen drivers bouncing off of each other rubbing on each other all in good fun and we've also seen a little bit of uh, the uh, angrier side of that I guess is a way to put it yeah we have seen a good fair share of rough racing tonight but I think with these four up front they're going to be rough with each other but I think they're still going to realize that if they get too rough then their might, night might be over. But the cleanest car out of all of them is actually Peterson with uh, with the clean car all together. I think the 56 is a completely clean car, but the other two guys in the stop four do not. So it'll be fun to see what happens here. Green flag back in the air, but a bad start for Peterson. A little bit slow off of the gate. Looks like Doucette actually wins that battle to the line, but on the outside of the racetrack, I think is going to be hard-pressed to make something happen against the 23, who you could argue has been the best in both of these cars over the course of both races tonight, at least the most consistent across the board. He'll steal lead. It's only by a half of a car length, though, now to three car length, three quarters of a car length, sorry. So that 23 of Peters is almost going to get the job done, and I think he is now clear. Yes, sir. Race lead. He's got it in yellow as we will stack him up and do it again. Big mess in turn three. Oh, still more contact there as it looks like. Yeah, contact in uh, three and four, I think. I think that's what it is. And uh, yeah, big accident there. I, uh, I'm actually not sub, just seeing an incident, but uh, Todd ne Novosad was in that one at least. It started in one. Joshua Cox gets hit by Chad Bass and the 06 machine is slotting through the corner and it was just one of those incidents, Gary, where they just wouldn't wreck and they were bouncing off each other and slipping and slotting until the point where they kind of snowballed into a four car wreck by the time they got to turn three. That's where it all stopped. Technically that was wreck, but it was more of a, uh, a moving wreck, if you will. So quite unfortunate as uh, yeah, the 06 almost had it, saved it, but then that just uh, that wreck moved itself all the way down to just near the beginning of turn number three. So four cars, and I'm seeing about two or three of which have pretty much are pretty much done for the rest of the night. Unfortunately, I believe Novosad was one of them. So right now, essentially the same top five, if you will. Tommy Ryan hasn't really gotten anything done as of yet. Yeah, he, I mean, it's a good point. We've talked a lot about Peterson, Doucette, Cucker, Wilkinson. They've all been mixing things up a little bit. Tommy Ryan kind of 
under the radar. Even somebody like a Joe Burchett, who has only dropped one spot tonight, just, I think, on the cusp of being in it. And again, I'll take 6th or 7th any day over 16th or 17th, but you have to feel like these guys are hoping that at least on one of these restarts, something will go their way and they can kind of get over that one little extra hump and get into the battle for the race win here. Yeah, also something to know is that I think Joshua Cox came down pit road to uh, fix some damage. Actually, it took tires. He's going to be disqualified. And he's going to fall all the way to wherever he lands from this lap. So he's done being scored for the rest of the night. So, yeah, that puts us one more driver off the lead lap. I think that leaves us with nine or so, actually ten drivers in the lead lap after we start with 21. So, fairly eventful night. Uh, it didn't start that way, but it has become that way. Here is uh, only about 30 or so left to go. And restart going to come 31 laps left to go. Pace car down and in the 77 to do set. Trying to find a little bit extra as we go back green. Steady even. Peterson had the nose at the start footage line. Look at the inside all the way down. Peterson, Cucker, Ryan, all four tires below that yellow line. As Peterson looks like he'll be able to defend again. In the 77 on the outside, he's not got that bad of a run this time. He might get clean clear I should say the 69 but he doesn't come down the track I think he had an opportunity to, to take care of business there and try to go back to the bottom but I think he's been I think he knows that the 69 is really fast on that bottom side and maybe doesn't want to cut him off knowing that he's got that front bumper used quite a bit already and a lot of that was because of that last restart and yeah I think all these guys now have a fair amount of damage but Peterson's absolutely just kind of checking out right now with these guys going side by side and the 56 of Wilkinson he's going to be patient only for so long knowing that he's got a fast car too and maybe that, you know, it makes you feel a little bit better, but I think that you don't want to get too far in the hole. And Cucker is going to win out at all of this. He'll jump up into the number two position. The 56 of Wilkinson looks like he'll get one back. He was really struggling outside of row two for the couple of restarts that he was fourth position on. He'll get third away from Doucette. That's huge for the 56. If we see another restart in this one, the 77 just can't get going this time. Did so good so many times, Gary, battling for the race lead. He'll fall to fifth now. Yeah, but look at this. The person making that pass is Tommy Ryan right now. So he's finally gotten that, uh, he's finally gotten his rhythm down. And he's finally moved up to at least fourth place right now. So great job on him on finally finding that momentum that he desperately needed. And Peterson right now has a little bit of a gap of a lead right now, about 0.6 seconds between he and Cucker. And of course, right now, just a little bit of a gap between Cucker and Wilkinson looking to be about 0.3 seconds so essentially about twice the distance but I think Cucker is starting to fall back just a little bit or Wilkinson is getting a lot of time on Cucker right now just trying to close the gap Cucker right now he's at a seven tenth of a second deficit to Peterson Wilkinson only about three tenths off but just kind of watching these intervals the last couple of times by not a whole lot up or down in the intervals between those top three, they've been pretty much even now. It's a different story third on the back. Wilkinson, Ryan, Doucette, Adams, they're all on top of each other, and this thing could break wide open any minute, but if somebody's going to make something happen inside of those top one, two, three positions as far as battling for the race win, they better figure it out sooner than later. 20 laps to go, and they're stuck right now in those runs. Yeah, I almost feel like this race is uh, getting a little anticlimactic with the fact that, that we haven't seen, we don't see uh, anybody really side by side yet. But I think that will obviously change once we get to the, it's the end of this one. I think these guys are trying to get their last little push ready to go because it, it takes a while to get a pass here at, at Linear. It doesn't, uh, it's not something that takes a, that takes a couple of laps. It takes typically uh, maybe five, ten laps to complete a pass, especially coming from the top side, which a lot of these guys like to do. So these guys might be settling out and uh, and then riding to the end of this race. I know some of them aren't, but I know maybe some of them are ready to uh, ready to get this car and, and then have a good finish at the end of the night. Peterson, I know he's probably running run the crowd out of that car, but uh, I think Matt Cucker's probably pushing it. So is Brandon at this point in the race. At this point in the race, it's it's do it now or forever hold your peace because you're going to be at 15 laps to go here shortly, spreading things out. Only 10 cars, mind you, on the lead lap. Lowest number we've seen all night, Gary. Just a small bit of a difference in the car count in this late model stock one than the super lates earlier, but both good field sizes. We haven't seen any of these come down to just 10 cars on a lead lap, so that means that things are really spread out. Less chance of somebody getting together. Of course, the fact that it's late in the race, people are going to be more aggressive 
that might negate that fact, but you get a couple of laps off of a race start, you start to spread out. Christian Peterson's getting a little bit more lap by lap. It's looking good for the 23. Yeah, 23 Pearson still keeping that momentum up and still keeping that dominant performance up as well. Cucker still in second, however, but he's uh, in a way under fire by Brandon Wilkinson at the moment. So if Peterson can break the uh, two race hole that Cucker has right now, that'd be pretty amazing and definitely a way to make a little bit of a statement to at least Matt Cucker right now. So staying out of the way is going to be that 36 of Wally Wilson right now. Could be a little bit of a problem for that number 56 of Wilkinson, but luckily they managed to make it out of turn two just A-OK -okay and turn number four as well. Almost a little bit of contact between both of those two. Don't count out Tommy Ryan, however, as he's been sitting here in fourth and could strike for third at any moment. It's all you're looking for is maybe catch him off guard a little bit. Wilkinson, I'm sure, trying to get up to Cucker. He's been doing a good job of closing in on the 69. I think going for the race lead out of the grasp of that Cucker at the moment. Christian Peterson appears to be set up in this race to go for a, another win in these super late models. And as we are, sorry, in the late model stocks, which as we talked about earlier, uh, second in the points into tonight without a win. So he's trying to break that drought here tonight. He's in a very good position. Matt Cucker is the one who came into tonight with a multiple wins at two, and he might just have to settle for a P2 the way it looks now. Yeah, he's getting the space between the 56, but he's not catching this 23 in any sort of way. and. Uh, trying talking about drivers that are going to try and do anything they can the 77 of Ryan who said I think just just absolutely pounded the outside wall and I think he's doing everything he can with what's left of his car which I think if he looks at the car after the race is over he's just going to be happy he even finished the race but uh, top five is where he's at right now but when you start to look behind there's a good battle going for sixth place Reed Rundle He's right there on the underside of the 89. I know there's not really a battle up front, but these guys are still battling for position. I said they might be done, but they're not. Then you got Joe Burchett who's in it too, so a little small pack here before the race is over. I think these guys will probably be reasonable with racing each other, but I think the 89 is being easy on the top side and 40, uh, 43 is being easy on the bottom side. And trying to get uh, maybe down low, of course, the fact that that apron's down there kind of adds Gary an additional lane where you don't necessarily have to have the positioning if you're willing to try hard enough. Yeah, but if you use that bomb lane, then uh, of course, you're definitely trying to either avoid wreck or trying a lot harder than normal. But you can see the A9 Jeremy Adams, or sorry, the 43 of Reed Rundell. He's not really, he's using that bomb lane, but not to the extent of really using putting his entire car down there. He saw in turns one and two, he just put the bomb uh, two left side tires below that double dash line and tried to get the advantage, almost had in turns three, got at least to the quarter panel, but couldn't really get anything. But back up front is Christian Pearson now is about to take the white flag. Coming to one lap to go for the 23 at Christian Peterson. He gets to it, and this race is going to be official. No wins yet this season. In the Cars Esport Tour, but he's been fast all night, and it is finally going to pay off for the 23 Chevrolet. Christian Peterson, winner tonight from Lanier in the late model stock division. Yeah, it was really that move. Uh whenever they had gotten jumbled up just able to get around these guys and then it appeared that he was the fastest car all along so that was really uh it's really interesting to see that he was really patient and waited for an opportunity and presented it himself and he absolutely took advantage of it takes advantage of that opportunity and does not look back and he's got some celebrating to do because peterson is your race winner tonight from lanier great drive for him again gary both races this one though is the one that the cards came together in yeah he's done an amazing job and just from that restart onward he had an amazing performance at keeping that lead and 13 points behind him uh, behind matt cucker heading into this race was peterson right now most likely it's going to show peterson out front in the point standings it would be well deserved if he's able to put himself on top your race winner from lanier as we wait for drivers to get trackside with us we'll take one quick opportunity to step aside and come back for post-race action for lanier on the other end you're watching lsr tv's continuing coverage of the cars esport tour powered by the championship esports association on your home for sim racing and our racing live post-race lanier when we're back I'm driving the number 20 JGR Toyota Xfinity car this weekend. Really great opportunity here at New Hampshire at my home track. 
Over the past few weeks, I've been on iRacing, practicing a little bit here and there with the modified and the uh, NASCAR Xfinity car. So it's been a lot of fun. It's been a great tool for me to, to kind of get used to that stock car body again and uh, be prepared for the race today. Well, yeah, it's, it's a mile long, so um, the draft kind of plays into effect here with the modifieds, punches a big hole in the air, uh, and we run restrictor plates. So uh, it makes a big difference. Um, just really fast, and, and, and it's our Daytona. So that's what's great about it, and uh, we have a fast car for tomorrow. I think the biggest thing is they're just, they're heavier cars. The tire's a lot different and the way you go about setting them up is a lot different. They use all four tires more than a modified where we typically drive off the right rear, you know, so. Well, actually, it's funny. Uh, I raced NASCAR race in 2003 before iRacing came about, and then when iRacing came about, uh, my friend Kevin Iannarelli, who works at iRacing, kind of told me, hey, man, you need to switch over to this, and, and when I did, I was like, oh, my God, this is like real life. Uh, so I started using it as a tool of mine to to really prepare for, for modified races, whether it was Stafford or Thompson or Loudoun, uh, Bristol, and then obviously the Xfinity Series last year going to road courses, trying to get laps, and, and use it as a tool that can get me as prepared as I could be without actually doing it, so it's been great. This broadcast is the copyrighted work of LSR TV and may not be rebroadcast, retranslated, or used in any form without the express written consent of Live Sim Racing LLC and iRacing.com Motorsport Simulations. LSR TV would like to thank you for your support and we hope you enjoyed tonight's broadcast. Back live from the Lanier National Speedway LSR TV post race show, covering uh, things up here tonight uh, for the fourth race of uh, this late model stock side of things on the 2018 Cars Esport Tour. Happy that you're sticking with us. Top three drivers post race down at trackside in a moment. But first, let's recap this one and look top to bottom at your LSR TV full race results. Christian Peterson gets the win first for him on 2018. Matt Cucker second to Brandon Wilkinson third. We'll get post-race reaction from all of them in a second here. Tommy Ryan comes home fourth, and Ryan Doucette get around things out through the top five. He saves result for Jeremy Adams. Looks like Reed Rundell will tie with Scott Austin for the biggest mover on the night. Plus ten, and he goes in seventh at the end of it all. Birch at eight, Scott Austin ninth, and then Sean Cross right there rounding out the top ten. He also rounds out all the lead lap drivers as Brad Carpenter finishes three laps down at 11th. Wally Wilson finishes 12th. Joshua Cox 13th. 14th goes to Chad Bass or Bass. Uh, Todd Nevisad finishes 15th. 16th goes to James Wilbach there. Kyle Edgar finishes 17th. Randy Yoakum 18th. John Lydae 19th. Devin Morgan and Cam Davidson with finishes 20th and 21st. Look top to bottom at your LSR TV full race results. And you'd buy with your race winner tonight in the late model stocks, Christian Peterson, your winner tonight from the Lanier Race Plex. Christian, congratulations on this win. Not that you guys were missing some success. You came into tonight uh, first and second in both of the different divisions championship standings of the first four weeks here, but you guys were still in search of that first win. Did a very competitive car that got roughed up a little bit on route to that third place finish earlier tonight, and this one you did not let that opportunity pass it up nice win in the late model stocks congrats yeah thanks evan um the uh yeah it was a little hairy for the, the super late and we were managed to pull something out but i was pretty surprised because uh we really didn't get that much practice we just did and uh and we actually hosted it for the wrong weather so um but uh, you know we 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 uh we got it up there with the super late so that was good but um restarts i kind of screwed up cucker was running third I think on the th restarts and he wanted me to try it because uh, he was behind me. Oh boy. Well, obviously, you know, you guys have been very good in, in both of the divisions, as I mentioned, actually came into tonight leading the championship in the Super Lates. That's a, a you know, tight race there. Jake getting a second win might just barely edge you out, but you guys are still going to be neck and neck in that one as well. Is there a big difference on like a, a momentum side of things or a psychological side of things to get that win? Does this win do a lot for you or is it not that different from how you guys have been running all year considering that despite the fact you haven't gotten that P1, you guys have still been very competitive? 
Yeah, I think we're just missing like that edge, but um, I don't know if we found it tonight or, or what's going to happen, but uh, it definitely feels good to get back in victory lane. So sorry about the music, by the way. It was really loud on the TV out here. Um, but the uh, yeah, just they just that edge, and I I don't know. I think we found it, but um, like I said, it's the supers is what I care about. I wanna I wanna do good in this too, but um, it's just putting that time and effort into the super to really get good and and uh, just use this for the the extra laps. If you can get a solid finish out of the way in the SLMs and come over here, the late model stocks being competitive, the more the merrier. No off weeks. We get right back into it next week. We head to Bristol Motor Speedway. Nothing like linear. What's the game plan headed into that one for the 23 team? Uh, same thing as last season. We were really good there last season, so plan to bring that uh, bring that thing out and see what it's got. Uh, I know tire models changed a few uh, a few aspects of the setup, but I think we should be able to load that one up and, and work off that and then um, just just do some laps in this thing and, and get it get it feeling, you know, how we like it with the offset or whatever. That's the one change we can make. So, um, you know, just, just do that. And I like Bristol, the high bank, a lot of load. So I think we should be good there. I'll let you take off, Christian. It's been a long night of racing, and you've been competitive throughout, so I'm sure you'd like a break. So we'll let you take off. But as always, sponsors, shout-outs, folks behind the scenes, who makes it happen getting you the first W of the year? Yeah, just got to thank everybody up in Uh um, we put in a lot of a couple hours before the ra uh, races tonight for that, and then um, just everybody at Peterson Irrigation, Globalcom, Austin Designs, and you guys in the booth at LSR TV, and then again Kyle Brummett, he spotted me tonight and uh, got me to the W, so yeah, that's uh, that's pretty cool. Excuse me, Christian Peterson in victory lane tonight. Christian, we always appreciate when you lend us time, so uh, thanks for joining us. Good luck next week. Thanks, guys. Nearly choking myself here after two hours. Christian Peterson, Jerace winner from Lanier. He gets it done in the late model stocks. So two different winners on the night accompanied that win from Watson a little bit earlier. Matt Cocker, somebody else competitive in both divisions tonight. He comes home P2 in this one and tracks side with him is Austin. Yeah, he's got two second place finishes in a row. I'm sure he would uh, pull a quote from Kyle Busch and wishes all those seconds were wins, but uh, you do get good finishes, and uh, obviously consistency is a good thing for you, Matt, and so uh, tonight was a good night for you, and uh, uh, what exactly, again, I, I don't know if I'll ask you the same question, what was the difference, but was there a, a difference between the practice and, and the race tonight that was a dif uh, different for you, at least, that, that uh, you lost a little speed, or was it kind of what you thought it would be? I mean, to be honest, I only ran, I ran two laps in practice session because I had to work on a super late model setup, and uh, I went out there, and I was, I thought I was quick. I had an 055 before the qualifying session, and the, the car felt all right. I knew it was going to be tight, and then once we got into here, it was the nighttime race, and Barnes came over the, the all, all drivers chat and said that it's, it built it on the outside, so I was expecting they'd be able to go to the outside more than the inside, and uh, it was a little bit different. I mean, everyone was on the bottom. You couldn't really make the top work. I made it work at the beginning, but I could not do anything on top at the end. Or uh, it was just all about trying to save the right front. And and like we talk about just about every week, uh, or just about every time we come to these short tracks, there's a lot of aggression uh, this week, or at least a lot of uh, a lot of bumping, especially for the for what happened to be uh, the race winning pass for the lead. Um, perspective on that for you uh, was there a lot of contact for you in particular or do you think it's just another day at the short track yeah, i was i was on the outside of wilkes and i don't know if it was a little warp that he had or or if i started coming down and got him in the right rear and we both had to get out of it and then when cp went to the inside i figured i'm going to shoot underneath try to get inside of wilkes too and then uh ryan got underneath of me and i wasn't expecting him to slide up i was thinking he was gonna hold it way down there on the apron but he slid up a little bit but uh, that's part of racing at these short tracks, and I'm okay with that as long as I don't get turned and it didn't destroy the car. Uh, bumping's racing, so I figured, hey, well, you bump me, I'm going to bump you back, and we'll just go on because it's short track racing. Well, that's what they all say until they get spun, right, Matt? I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, Matt, uh, before we let you go, uh, like you, like we talked about earlier, uh, sponsor shout-out to makes it happen for you, man. I got to thank Team Vince here. Uh, Turn 3 Auto Transport, uh, Globalcom, um, I Analyze, Scott Austin Designs, and uh, Six Man Race Cars. Uh, you guys for broadcasting, and uh, Kyle Barnes for putting the show on. Like always, it's ha happy to have you uh, back in the booth two times. And uh, we'll send it down to Gary, who will catch up with, uh, with Brandon. But thanks for your time there, Matt. Thank you. Have a good night.
and we'll swiftly give it to Gary. Here with Brendan Wilkinson, who starred third, finished third as well. So in that term, not really a, a pretty decent night, if you will. But throughout this entire 150 lap event, Brendan, I'm pretty sure you've had uh, your fair share of exciting moments here. And that was definitely a ex uh, little bit of a traffic jam there. As I believe you got shuffled back about to fourth at one point when uh, you guys ran into a lot of traffic. So... All in all, you still managed to pull off a top three finish. Yeah, we get we were able to get out front. Um, started behind James, and, and uh, I know he's been having some technical issues. Uh, we were able to get by him, and had like a 3.5 second lead at one point, and we were given lap times fed to us, and I was like, holy crap, I need to back it down, and because I just didn't back it down enough, didn't have enough drive off there, but. Um, talking to Matt and CP after the race, definitely a couple things I probably could have worked on, but uh, Matt and I got hooked um, in three and four, and the C is kind of part of the CP there, and uh, you know he was able to get to lead and, and track position is definitely key here. We had a string of restarts there, and just uh, we were second, then we were third and fourth, and we were able to get down at one point and just skip by said and we kind of just rode from there. Um, the car is decent tonight, but. Uh, you know, I just, everybody had the same setup, so it was clear, you know, driver just needs to pick it up a little bit. And of course, uh, you did manage to keep up your pace and again, pull off that third place finish. So how were those green flag runs working out for you? Uh, you know, the car's a little tight. Um, couple, like I said, a couple things I was talking to Matt and CP about. Uh, definitely, when we come back here in August, definitely have to try it out. But uh, yeah, the green flag runs were fun. Um, I felt like we were at worst a third car, third place car tonight. So you know, when we were in third, we kind of just didn't really have any pressure. The first run was great. Um, I didn't see anybody for the whole straightaway, but reality hit fast when they got back to me, and we struggled on the restarts a little bit tonight. But uh, you know, all in all, it was a good night. You know, I'm not not disappointed uh you know we ran from from 14th to 7th in the super and another good point stay there and um last week we finished second but uh understandably got put back to 12 so um third place is definitely refreshing and a, a breath of fresh air for sure That's simply exciting to watch as well so before we let you go anybody uh that you'd like to thank sponsors or any shout outs yeah, I just want to say good racing to 69 and, and 23. Sucks we got hooked because of, you know, not the driver's doing, but we'll get that fixed hopefully here in the next couple of weeks. I uh, just got to thank everybody at Mad Dog Motorsports, um, Scott Eckers Chassis, everybody that works on the super late model setups that I can't mention because, uh, yeah, uh, American Pool Supply, Sim Marketing Solutions, uh, David Morgan, Mad Dog Motorsports, Billy Tungate, my teammate Sean Cross, Derek Paulson. James Mobacher. Um, yeah, that's about it. LSR TV, because I always forget to mention you guys, and uh, Kyle Barnes for putting on a league that mimics real life and uh, gives us a fun place to run. Well, we also thank you back in return for giving us this performance of a night. So, congratulations to you, Brendan Wilkinson, on finishing third place tonight. Thanks, brother. So, we're going to hand it back up to Evan in the booth. Well, big thanks, Christian Peterson, Matt Cucker, Brandon Wilkinson, a couple of those drivers uh, joining us twice tonight over the course of our super late model and late model stock coverage. Gary, definitely a lot more green flag racing in that second one on the late. The late model stocks both, though, had a lot of fantastic fun racing and two different tails of the tape. Earlier tonight, the SLMs, Jake Watson gets his second consecutive win. It'll put him to the championship lead. And in this one with the late model stocks, Christian Peterson gets his first of the year, not going to go all the way to the top, though, because Matt Cucker, championship leader in tonight, right there in P2 to maintain a points gap in the next week. Yeah, Cucker's last two wins at Myrtle Beach and Martinsville had give, given him that advantage just enough to stay in that points lead, so he will be a little bit probably on edge heading into Bristol, maybe a little bit relaxed, but that's just something that we're going to have to find out.
And of course, Bristol, what a week's time. Coop, no off week this time. We've got a nice little set here of back-to-back -back races. We'll get a week off, and, and then we'll head uh, to our, uh, looks like what would be total the seventh race of the season uh, at the start of June. But Bristol, next week, next Wednesday, and it's going to be a fun one. 100 laps in each of these divisions, so we'll be able to catch both cars in action again. And, well, it, you mentioned at the very start of the evening, near 8 degrees of banking, a little bit more than that at Bristol. Oh yeah, and I think uh, I think we're going to be seeing a lot of different uh, interesting setups for the super late models. I think I'm I'm really excited about that uh, in particular because uh, you can see a, a lot of uh, a lot of different strategies on gear ratio, just the way the car turns in the corner. Um, that's what I'm most looking forward to. I think. We hope that you join us that time around. However, the good news is you don't have to wait until next Wednesday to catch us the next time out at LSR TV and our racing live because we have a lot more coming up this week. And the good news is haven't even been able to announce this one on the Twitter or the Facebook yet, but we have a special event tomorrow night, 9 o'clock Eastern time, right here on LSR TV and our racing live, the OCRL All-Star Race from Charlotte. Again, 9 o'clock tomorrow night on Thursday. We'll have more information about that tomorrow morning. Morning. But then, of course, at the end of the week, it's our Saturday night double headers, 9 o'clock. The bootleg race in Lee Outlaw Auto Finds. And then at 10, immediately after that, wraps up. It is the United States Race to BNC Lawn and Landscaping Truck Series. Full schedule, our website, www.livesimracing.com. You can also find out more information on how to get your race broadcasted here on LSR TV. The best way to keep up to date with us, though, follow us on social media. A like on Twitter at Facebook, or rather, a like on Facebook. Facebook.com forward slash LSR TV official or just search LSR TV on there or you can follow us on Twitter. That's the word I'm looking for at LSR TV over there for more information. Until next time, though, on behalf of the entire team here at Live Star Racing LLC for the folks behind the scenes, DJ Lion, Laura Loss, and everybody who makes it happen night in and night out. And of course, for your team tonight, for myself, Evan Pasoko, for Austin Coop, Gary Weaver, and our producer, Cisco Scaramuza, I want to thank you for joining us and congratulations. Late your race winners. Jake Watson, second on the year in the SLMs. And Christian Peterson in the late model Sox gets his first on this 2018 campaign. We are back next Wednesday, May the 16th, for the Bristol Motor Speedway. That race and every race at the Championship Esports Association Cars Esport Tour can be found right here on LSR TV. Your home for sim racing. Until next time, good night from Lanier.